And we should mention this is a split crew of officials here today. That may be something we won't see in the future. There is talk about uh, getting rid of split crews. But I talked to one official yesterday who said he thinks it won't happen in quite a while. You know, last year, Matt Rogers was a rookie for the Hawkeyes. We'll see if Bob Utter can overcome that first big game today. There's Jeff Skillet. He'll put his foot on the ball. And the 1990 meeting between the Hawkeyes and Cyclones is underway. And Hill, one yard deep in the end zone, gets out to about the 20. Gary Clark down on the tackle that time for the Iowa Hawkeyes. So Cyclones get pretty fair uh, starting position at the 19-yard line. As Marcus said, the freshman, Bob Utter, in at quarterback. And I guarantee you there was nothing like this at Brother Rice High School last year. Utter comes into the ball game two for three last week against the Minnesota Golden Gophers in the late going. And Iowa State will send out three wide receivers all to the left side. Sherman Williams, the only setback in the backfield. Utter, quick slant pass, incomplete. Intended for John Blotfeldy, the flanker. A little nervous energy there, John, overthrowing him. Just a little nervous energy. Quick drop, quick pass. Blotfeldy couldn't hold on to it. It'll be second and ten. Black Valley comes into the game with six receptions for 107 yards, averaging almost 18 yards per catch. That play almost worked to perfection the entire first half last week against Minnesota. Same formation. Same play. Black Valley has it. First down across the 30 to the 34. And Iowa rolls him down. Brian Weiss, the strong safety, comes up to make the hit, along with Leroy Smith. Well, he obviously felt from the first play that he was still open. They're going to go it again. And uh, they got the completion to Gladfeldy. Now Iowa State comes in with an eye formation. Sundiata Patterson will be the fullback. They'll bring Mahoney in motion. To the right side, the pitch goes to Williams, and he has nowhere to run. Rod Davis, the nose guard, closes the hole for no gain. That's one of the strengths of Rod Davis. Uh, I was strong at the nose guard position this year. Watch Davis just go by the blockers and come right in on top of Williams. Nowhere to go. Rod Davis, very, very quick, Mark. Brings up a second down and 11 according to the scoreboard. So actually a loss of one on the play and the ball spotted at the Cyclone 34-yard line. Just underway, Kinnick Stadium, Iowa City, Iowa. This time, Williams. Bumble! And it's still loose and Iowa has come up with it. Eddie Polly has fallen on the football inside the 40-yard line and now a fight down on the field. You don't think tempers aren't flying in this one. And now the bench of the Iowa Hawkeyes comes out onto the field. Iowa State staying back. And the Cyclone coaches getting in front of the Iowa State team. So the only team that came out on the field was Iowa. And listen to the roar of the crowd. We definitely didn't need that to start things off with, Mark. And now the flag is down on the field because of the fracas, and we'll see how they rule it. Well, you can bet these officials want to get control of this game right away. There was an ugly scene here last year with the fans throwing things on the field, but uh, this is the first time that I can remember the Hawkeyes coming out like this. There's Hayden Fry. He was out on the field. I don't think anything like this has ever happened in an Iowa, Iowa State game. Let's listen to Jim Kemmerling, the umpire. We have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike against the offense, unsportsmanlike there, offset, first down. Now, let's take another look at exactly what happened. Jim Wallen was afraid of turnovers. He said, that will kill us. And on the first possession, Sherman Williams coughs it up. 
Well, Jim Johnson made the hit, and there's Eddie Polly, 27. The ball is kicked loose, and Polly keeps going for it. And uh, no running with it that time, Mark. He's just going to cover the ball and give it to the Hawkeyes in great field position. Iowa will take over just across the 40-yard line, first and 10. And there comes Matt Rogers. Last week, 15 of 27, two interceptions for 191 yards. He's hitting 56% of his passes, but he also carried for 38 yards. And last week, Iowa had a record-setting day. On the ground, nine touchdowns rushing. So a surprise there, but Hayden Fry wants to develop this rushing game, and that was a good way to start. Rodgers, of course, had a great game against Iowa State last year over names in his first start, three touchdowns in that ball game. This is his second time round to face a college team for the second time. Less than two minutes gone in the first quarter. Clock stop, 13.46 to go in the first. And now we are ready to play, says referee Jim Kimmerly. Rogers seventh in Iowa career passing over 2,400 yards. And it'll be Montgomery the fullback and Stewart the tailback. In motion goes Hughes, the pitch goes to Stewart. And Iowa State shuts the door. Right about the line of scrimmage, it's Marcus Robertson, the all-Big 8 quarterback, that comes to put the hit on. And that's why Robertson is so valuable to Iowa State. There's a lot of talk he'll play free safety in the pros, but he's just too big and too good a tackler uh, to let up and not have out there on the corner for their defense. Iowa State has played two games, and they are allowing opponents only 84 yards average rushing per game. Iowa State first in the Big 8 against the rush. Same formation. Tight end is standing up. The handoff goes to Stewart. Left end. Big hole. First down and more. And Stewart still on his feet to the 20. Tony Stewart finds some daylight, and Iowa State moves the sticks. Watch the tight end, number 84, Ron Ryan. Good block right there on number 40, and that opens the way for Stewart. And he just runs through some tackles. Dana Hughes, number three, also blocking downfield. Finally caught by Matt Rayberg, and there's a good look at Tony Stewart. Comes into the ball game with 114 yards last week against the Bearcats of Cincinnati. And Stewart again, right up the middle. Down to about the 11 yard line. Oh, the Hawkeye front line is really opening up some holes, John. Let's take a look from ground level. A lot of beef up front for Iowa. You see Stewart going through there. Gain of six on the play brings up second down and four. The ball spotted on the Cyclone 12. Rodgers hands off to Stewart, tries the left side, and very little there. Little, if any, game. Mark DeBrava, the free safety, came up to put the insurance tag on him. Good gang tackling right there by the Iowa State Cyclones. But the Hawkeyes picked up the first down. There's Matt Rogers. Hayden Fry calls the plays, and he sends them in from the sidelines. Jim Walden lets his offensive coordinator call most of the plays and signals them in from the sideline. John Falloon in that wide receiver now for the Hawkeyes. He brought the play in. Falloon split to the right side. It's Danon Hughes coming in motion. And the pitch goes to Stewart. And Iowa State shuts the door again. Stewart with very little gain up to about the seven-yard line. Here's the play again now. Stewart behind Lou Montgomery. Montgomery gets a piece of his man, but Iowa State's there. Number 25, Mark DeBrava, one of the three Iowa State tacklers. DeBrava had a big game last week against Minnesota with 13 tackles. From the seven. Slot formation to the left side. Here's the option and the rollout. Touchdown, Iowa! Rodgers complete to Michael Tidley. Yeah. 
Rogers had all day to unload it. And when he did, Titley was there, and it's 6-0 Hawkeyes. That is Michael Titley's first collegiate touchdown. I'm sure he's thrilled about that, as you can see. Here it is. Rogers just going to roll out, play action to Stewart. Has plenty of time out here, and then looks right along the end line. And Michael Titley was there. Nice catch by Michael Titley. Tidley had double coverage down there, but still collects it for the TD, and the point after is good. So we have 10.55 to go in the first quarter here at a sold-out Kinnick Stadium. Iowa State turned it over on their first possession. The Hawkeyes found the end zone. In Iowa City, the Iowa Hawkeyes up 7-0 with 10.55 to play in the first. And Iowa getting set to kick off for the second time this afternoon. Iowa State took possession first, but it resulted in a turnover inside their own territory. This one heading down towards Hill. And Hill up to the 25 and then drilled at about the 27. Gary Clark puts the hit on Lamont Hill, and here's the scoring drive. Six plays, 39 yards. And as we said, it didn't take long. Three minutes, one second. Rogers to Titley, a seven-yard TD pass in the right corner of the end zone. And there's Matt Rogers. Good Mike. start for the Hawkeyes, Mark. Excuse me, good start. They didn't score in the first quarter last week. Iowa State has also had trouble scoring in the first quarter with only three points, uh, three first quarter points in two games. Iowa State opening up in an eye formation. They move tight end Mike Mahoney over to the right side, then send fullback Sundiata Patterson in motion. Here's the slant pass complete to Chris Spencer. And Spencer picks up the first down. Doug Book puts the hit on him. You call it just a quick one about a two-step drop. And Utter is firing. And he has his man. I was going to have to figure out how to stop this little pass. Ball spotted down at the 44-yard line. Chris Spencer injured back in 1989. Didn't play. But he's certainly contributing this year to Cyclone's success. Single back set, three wide receivers, trips to the right. Handoff goes to Sherman, and he cuts right and picks up a nice gain of about seven or eight. Sherman Williams tries up the middle, made a little juke step, then ran into Leroy Smith. This guy's lightning quick, a 4-2-9 in the 40 he was once timed at. And as we see here, some power also as he runs out of the tackle before finally going down. Sherman Williams, a true sophomore, a little guy, 5-8, 174-pounder. Gain of eight on the play, second down and two on the 48-yard line. Into Iowa territory for the first time today. Patterson, the fullback, across the 40 to the 39. Leroy Smith again makes the stop, but Iowa State's ground game certainly going to work here. If they can run against the Hawkeyes, and here we see the play, just some zone blocking, and he runs to daylight. Nice play by Patterson. Iowa State matches up well size-wise up front, but Mark, in this, uh, in this game. Patterson only a sophomore also, six foot, 197 pounder. Came into the game with only four carries. Hunter wants to throw. He'll tuck it away and scamper for his life to the 36. A gain of two for Bob Utter, and he's covered by John Derby, the linebacker. You know, that might help him just a little bit to be finally uh, be hit out there on the field and get some of those uh, uh, jitters out of the way. Iowa had the uh, receivers well covered on that one. He had a lot of time, just didn't have anybody open. So he did the right thing, tucked it under, and ran. Otter last week, as we mentioned earlier, threw three passes against Minnesota. Connected on two of them. This time the draw play goes to Williams. He's got a big hole. If he can get by, he almost had it. Across the 20, roll down inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. Ryan White.
twice. The strong safety finally made the game-saving tackle or the score-saving tackle on that particular play. Iowa State taking advantage of a big Iowa rush here. Great call on the draw, and there you see Spencer. He just runs away from Doug Book, and finally two Hawkeyes catch up with him. formation for the Cyclones. Both wide receivers split to the right side. First down at the Iowa 14-yard line. Sherman Williams again. Down to the 10. Is it a fumble? Nope. The line judge right there on the play says he was down. Mel Foster put the hit on Williams. Take another look at it to see if he indeed was down when that ball pops loose. We called William Spencer a second ago. This is indeed uh, Williams. Oh, yeah. He's ball right pops loose. Good call. Second down and six. The tight end Mahoney in motion. The fullback Patterson down to about the six. <laughs> Eight of about five on the play. Matt Rulin made the stop. There's Sundiata Patterson, six foot, 197 pounds, sophomore from Detroit. JV player last year, coming into his own right now. Hasn't done badly so far this year for Jim Walden. As you can see right there, two carries today, 14 yards. He comes into the game averaging five and a half per call. Third down and two. Boy, would this give Iowa State some early momentum. Hunter wants to draw, quarterback draw. He has the first down, but he stopped short of the goal line. And it may be close enough to measure. Hunter spotted at the three, and he needed to get to the three and a half, so it should be a first and goal. Jim Johnson makes the tackle. Well, he's looking to his right, nobody open there. So he feels some open space, goes left, and Johnson finally hog ties him. But I'm really impressed so far with Utter's performance here, Mark. Very composed so far. Troy Moore goes split wide to the right. And he set a passing record as a high school senior, as you see right there. High formation, first and goal at the three. Williams. Close, but I don't believe he gets in. He stops short of the goal line. Another look here, John, from the end zone. Williams coming out of that eye back. Soon he had a Patterson in front of him. Puts a block on Foster. The Hawkeyes just collapsed. Eddie Polly in there, uh, part of the Hawkeye tackling bunch. Got a hand it to Mel Foster there. He fought off one block and still gets credit for part of the tackle. Second and goal at the one. Wonder if Bob Utter will call his own number. Nope. Williams. And he stopped short again. And listen to the Hawkeye fans. They love it. Well, the big guys pull here for Iowa State, but the Hawkeyes smell it out. John Derby moves in there. Melvin Foster, Jim Johnson, Moses Santos all in on the stop. Jim Walden was very upset last week because... Iowa State had the same situation in Minnesota. And they were unable to punch it in. They had to settle for a field goal in their first drive against Minnesota. So far today, Iowa State one of one on third down conversions. And now timeout call by Bob Utter of Iowa State. 5-13 to go in the first. Iowa State knocking on the door. Goal from the one. Utter calls his own number, and let's see if he makes it. An Iowa State player held up his arms. Now the line judges trying to unpile everyone. Matt Rulin was in that Iowa State backfield very quickly. I'm not sure that he got in. And the crowd will tell you he didn't, Mark. He's still short. And now decision time for that gentleman, Jim Walden. They had the same scenario last week at Minnesota, as we said, and had to settle for three. They are not going to try it this time. They're going for it. 
I think this is the right call in this situation. Even if they don't get it, they have Iowa pinned in their own end zone. This could be a big lift for the Cyclones if they get in the end zone right now. Double tight end formation. They send in, well, no, they take Mahoney out. They bring in Hussein Warmack. Otter tries it again. Touchdown, Iowa State. And the freshman guides the Cyclones to the end zone on the second Cyclone possession of the afternoon. Well, even though the Iowa State Cyclone fans are located in the other end zone, they like this one as they see Utter just sneak over his left guard and go in. John, there is a flag down on the field. This one may come back. Let's listen. No, it's a personal foul against Iowa. So the score will count and the penalty assessed on the kickoff. Jeff Shudak on now to attempt the point after. Shudak so far perfect on the year, and let's listen to the. Will be attempt and a kickoff. Kickoff. Mark with Peterson hurt John Schnorr, the putter, will be doing the holding today for the placements. Interesting point. Everybody says the quarterback's out, but they don't realize that could play a big role in a situation like this. Shudak six of six on the year. Ball is up. And it's good. And we are tied in Iowa City with 4.45 to play in the first. Iowa State will pick up a little yardage due to that personal foul penalty on the kickoff. And we'll be back to Iowa City after this timeout. Team plays 72 yards in six minutes, two seconds. And it's Bob Utter with a one-yard quarterback sneak for the score. And there's the look at the freshman. Two of three today in the passing department. And he's carried four times for six yards. But boy, that was a big score for Iowa State, John. Iowa State needed the touchdown. This one will not be run back. Into the end zone, touchback. And Iowa will start out on their own 20-yard line. Well, that's a heck of a kick when you consider the wind's coming out of the north, Mark, that he sure. put it in there. Had a little advantage from the penalty, though, also. Yes, that's true. I, I forgot about that. Exactly. Jeff Antilla wanted no part of that, so the Hawks will start at the 20. Matt Rogers comes on to guide the Hawkeyes in their second possession of the afternoon. The first one ended up a TD to Michael Titley. And it's still Tony Stewart and Lou Montgomery in the backfield. Dana Hughes in motion, the rollout by Rogers, pitches it to Stewart, nowhere to go, and picks up a couple. The option play is not foreign to Iowa State. They see a lot of that from Oklahoma over the years. In past years, Iowa has run this option play down near the goal line, but they showed last week that they're willing to run it out of the open field, and here's a definite... Uh... Marcus Robertson put the hit on, but then Stewart still fought his way for a couple more. Gain of three on the play, second down and seven at the 23. This time, the handoff goes to Stewart, and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Dead in his tracks by number 99, Mark Dunn. Among the other pile, Dan Milner also in on the tackle. The defense here by the Cyclones, this is the one thing that they want to do. They want to uh, put Iowa in predictable situations. Milner, nice hit there for the tackle. A gain of one. Brings up third down and six. Split backs in the backfield now. A new formation. Straight drop back by Rodgers. And in and out of the hands of Tony Stewart. He was wide open coming out of the backfield. Simply couldn't hang on. Maybe looked before he had the ball. Yeah, I think uh, that's exactly what happened. The ball was coming. He kind of cocked his head just a little bit. That's what happens. you got to concentrate. you got to look it all the way in. So Iowa forced to punt for the first time today. And back deep is Jim Heisack to do the punting. Iowa State will send Marcus Robertson back along with Jason Williams. Heisack with a high one to Williams. He gathers it in at the 41. And has a nice return across midfield into Iowa territory to about the 46. And there may be a flag down on the play.
Check the penalty here. Here it comes. Flipping against Iowa State. Forty-one yard punt for Isaac. Even with the penalty, Iowa State will have good field position here. Well, they still haven't spotted the ball after marching off the penalty. Here it comes. Have a dead ball. Clip after the run box. First and 25. Ooh, that's an even bigger call because now the the Cyclones will start out first and 25. Yeah, as I said, great field position, but now we find out not such a good situation. Three wide receivers to the left side for Iowa State. The lone setback is Sherman Williams. And Utter wants to throw. He's two of three, make it three of four. Has his man up to midfield. And it's complete to Williams coming out of the backfield. Eddie Polly in on the stop. Coming into this game, he only had one reception for 39 yards. Nice catch here by Williams, wide open on the side. A little safety valve type pass, and Polly moves in on the stop. Well, that's a way to gallop a first and 25. They pick up half of it in one play. Brings up second down and 13. And the ball also in Iowa territory at the Hawkeye 49. Under three of four, 42 yards, one TD today. But that by rushing. Quick one. Slide out to Glock Valley. It's a horse race. First down. He gets by the man coverage, and he's open. But Brian Wise catches Glock Valley from behind. That was Doug Book that he beat on that uh, coverage right there. Here we're going to see it. The quick pass, about a one-step rock. Book doesn't get the tackle. Glottfeldy takes it down the center of the field. So Iowa State on the march. And there's a good look at John Glottfeldy. Comes into the game with six receptions on the year, averaging almost 18 yards per catch, over 100 yards in receptions. High formation. And ooh, Bob Utter calls timeout. And I don't know if Jim Walden really wanted him to do that. That's the second TD call by Iowa State here in the first half. Utter goes to the sideline to talk to Jim Walden, and apparently he saw something that he didn't like. Norm Anderson, the offensive uh, coordinator, the offensive uh, quarterback coach and, and running back coach over there talking along with Walden to Utter. Utter so far has been uh, very composed, doing a good job out there for a freshman. Came out of Brother Rice High School over in Michigan. And on the other bench, Iowa coach Hayden Fry. Hayden is in his 29th year of college coaching. 173, 135 and 8. He's 84, 46 and 4 at Iowa. Other games this afternoon. Early in the first quarter, the Michigan Wolverines leading the UCLA Bruins 14 to nothing. No score between the Razorbacks and Ole Miss. Here in Iowa City, it's all tied 7-all, and we have 209 to go in the first. First and 10 at the Hawkeye 30. In at fullback right now, another freshman for Iowa State. That's Jay Jordan. And the handoff goes to Williams, tries to cut against the grain, and there's no opening there. Jim Johnson makes the stop. Johnson had 14 tackles against Iowa State last year. Well, he's from Forest City. He really gets into this rivalry. He enjoys this game. As we heard in the pregame, he, he said he was speechless. He couldn't wait to play the ball game. I'm not so sure this might be Jay Jordan's first game experience out there. Well, he's a freshman back. from Parkersburg. Audible at the line. Jordan gets the call and gets a couple straight up the middle. 
John Derby, the linebacker, makes the hit. Jordan, a great career at Parkersburg High School, 2,142 yards rushing and 28 touchdowns, first team All-State, played in the Shrine game uh, up at the Unidome this year. As a matter of fact, on his team in the backfield in that Shrine game, Ed Three, Corey Bender, both playing for UNI now, LaShane Sadler, who's over at Notre Dame, and Jay Jordan. Iowa State goes with three wide receivers. Jordan comes out. Troy Moore comes into the lineup. And Utter has called timeout again. Iowa State with 51 seconds to play in the first quarter is out of timeouts for the half. Well, he's coming up there, and obviously the Iowa defense is showing him something that he uh, cannot understand or doesn't want to run the play against. Now, this is freshman stuff. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. But he's also co so composed that he's not trying to run the play against something that he doesn't understand. So he's coming over here and talking to the Iowa State coaches. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He may learn more today than he's learned in four years of high school and the first three weeks of college. <laughs> they paint their faces in Iowa City. And their bodies. And the Cyclone brass section doing a little workout. There's Hayden Fry pacing nervously on the sideline. He wants to win this game. So does Jim Walden. And as we said, emotions are strained due to that film flap this week. No timeouts remaining for Iowa State. Let's hope they don't need one before the halftime gun sounds. Well, they're certainly in a hole from that uh, point of view. They're, they're out of timeouts. If they get in a two-minute offense situation towards the end of the half, uh, they obviously won't have a timeout to work with. The key will be, will Utter have to call these timeouts early in the third or fourth quarter if it's a close ball game? Same formation. Three wide receivers. Moore, Glottfeldy, split wide. Audible perhaps again. Utter straight back to throw. Throwing deep for Glottfeldy and overthrows everyone. He went for the end zone. And now it brings up fourth and eight. And I would imagine that Iowa State may try a field goal here, and indeed they will. Jeff Shudak comes in. He has a 40-yarder as his longest so far this year, but he, in practice, has kicked him as far as 55, 60 yards. He really has a leg. Well, he'll be kicking into a stiff wind, however, on this one. And he'll be kicking off the natural turf. A 45-yard attempt, straightaway center. The ball is long enough. But it's no good. It's off to the side. He had the distance, but not the accuracy. So the Hawkeyes hold. 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. So far, Iowa has scored once. Iowa stayed once. Each team has stopped the other one time. Well, I'm impressed with Iowa State coming in here without their three big guns or three of their bigger guns in Blaze Bryant, Peterson, and Watkins. They're showing a lot of moxie so far. Iowa has the win behind their backs. They need to take advantage of that right now. Nick Bell checks in a tailback now. The big guy comes in for the Hawkeyes. His first appearance today, complete to Michael Titley. First down, Iowa across the 40-yard line, and what a sidearm rocket from Rogers. Michael Titley having a big game. Rogers looking to him. So far in the first quarter, just gets in the seam of that zone defense, and he's wide open. Brava and Lazard coming in on the tackle. And there's Rogers wearing that tin advisor, Mark. Yes, that's really a two-fold purpose. One, it acts as sunglasses. Second thing is, it prevents the DBs from seeing where you're looking out there, doesn't it? That's exactly the idea. Motion now to the left side, and Bell gets the call right up the middle. Nick Bell, and is he big? 6'3", 255-pound senior playing tailback. He's a load. There you see him. Coming in behind Lou Montgomery. Good block on the backer. And now it's just a big kid from Las Vegas bowling his way for an extra yard or two. Boy, he just 
took Matt Rayburg right along, and Rayburg's no little guy, 265, 6'4". First quarter is history, and at a sold-out Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, we've got exactly what the fans have wanted. A dead even game so far. Iowa with a second down and five coming up on their own 45 yard line. Nick Bell still in there, a tailback. The rollout by Rodgers. And he is right on target. Complete for the first down. And he hits Mike Saunders, the wingback. Here comes Rodgers on the rollout. A couple of blockers out in front, and John Palloon over here on the sideline with the catch. Palloon from Manson, Iowa. Marcus Robertson on the tackle. We stand corrected. It was Palloon with a reception. Saunders comes into the ball game. That eight looked like a three from our angle up here. Now we have Saunders in motion. And the handoff goes to Bell, and he loses his footing at about the 45-yard line. Travis Bach, the young man from Zwingle, Iowa, went to Maquoketa High School. Rogers having trouble getting a handle on it, but it's Block who gets in there and slows Nick Bell up, and then he goes down. Give him the tackle. Dane and Hughes split wide to the near side. Balloon to the top of your screen. And a split setback formation in the backfield. Rogers with a straight drop back. Wants to throw, going over the middle, complete! First down, Hawkeyes! Balloon with his second catch of this drive. Well, you're going to see Rodgers wants Dana Hughes on the left side. He almost releases it, pulls it back, and then hits Balloon over the middle. Balloon, great hands. Just sucks that one in, no question about it. First down, Hawks. John Flood had two receptions last week for 26 yards. Boy, Matt Rogers is really poised this year. Last year in his rookie season, a lot of indecision. Here's the draw play to Bell. Delay handoff, and the big guy may go all the way. Touchdown, Iowa! Well, this is what Iowa State didn't want to do. They didn't want to give up the big play. Balloon gets a block right there, and Bell just runs through the Iowa State tackler. That's why the pros like him, Mark. He's so big and has such great quickness. Iowa State couldn't stop him. Several of the pro scouts have commented. They think that Bell will be one of the first five players chosen in the NFL draft. 78 was Rob Baxley screening his man off. Now the point after, Skillet with the attempt. It is up, and it's good. So the Hawkeyes strike first again, now in the second quarter. And with 13.33 to go in the half, Iowa's up by seven. Well, there's an indication of the wind here at Kinnick Stadium, out of the north, about 25, 30 miles per hour. 14-7, Hawkeyes, 13.33 to go in the first half. As a matter of fact, the wind just blew the football off the tee as Jeff Skillet got ready to kick off. Think there are any televisions in the state of Iowa not turned on to this game today, John? Well, we hope that's not the situation. We hope they're all watching us, enjoying the broadcast. They're special viewers. Only four stations in the whole country get to show this game. Yeah. So if they get to see it, they're special. It took just about an act of Congress to get this game on television. <laughs> Short kick. Real short kick. And it may go out of bounds. It does. That one ricochets out of bounds at about the 32, but I think someone may have touched it. It may be down over there. Jim Walden in on the controversy right now. He says, you mean to tell me you didn't see that? Well, they're discussing it. So they're having a big, big discussion. Yeah. And they are going to have a conference away from Jim Walden. I noticed Hayden Fry, uh, when that happened, was excited on the Iowa sidelines. Somebody touched the ball because it changed directions. Now the flag is thrown, so apparently it just goes out of bounds. 
Walden appears not to be too upset. Let's listen to the referee. That illegal touching by the kicking team. The receiving team has to touch the ball before it goes out of bounds. We're going to have five yards on the kickoff. There you go. So they kick it off again. Aiden Pry. I don't know if he liked that too much. I think he wants to uh, talk to one of the stripes here. No, he's going to talk to Bobby Elliott. <laughs> All right, let's check the scoring drive here if we have an opportunity. Hawkeyes, of course, leading 14-7. And boy, did they march up the field in a hurry. 72 yards in just four plays. And, of course, Nick Bell with that 28-yard draw play for the touchdown. And there is Nick Bell. Well, Iowa State should get great field position out of this when their deep men are now located like at the 15-yard line. Remember when we came back from commercial, we showed you the flags, how they are blowing here, and Jeff Skillet is kicking right into the wind. And this time he'll have to kick from the 30 instead of the 35. Are some of the people making our telecast possible and bringing it your way today in Sioux City, KCAU, WOI and Des Moines Ames, KCRG and Cedar Rapids, and WQAD and the Quad Cities. Glad to have you aboard with us. Skillet tries it again, this time a line scooter, and it's picked up inside the 20. Picked up by Patterson, and he's still going up to midfield. They can't bring him down. He gets to the 45 of Iowa. Talk about a bull. Wow. You know who was in on the tackle? Jeff Skillet, the kicker. They don't like that. That was a great run by Iowa State. Now, is this Patterson or Warback? Let's double check the number here. I believe it's Warback. I think it's Hussein Warback. He was the starting fullback for Iowa State. Got switched to tight end. Look at the legs. Burton Hanks finally meets him head on. Number 11 was still at the kicker. Here go the Cyclones. Now nobody in the backfield as Williams goes in motion. Otter has better, better throw. He does. Out to Williams, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Up across the 40 to about the 37. And that's what you call spreading them out, John. They had him from sideline to sideline with that formation. And once again, you put the ball in the hands of this young man, number three, Sherman Williams. And uh, he's all over the field, let's say. Gain of seven on the play. It brings up second down and three at the Iowa 38. And now we're back to the full house backfield, or actually the I formation. And the handoff goes to Williams. And he has the first down and more across the 30. Doug Book in on the stop for Iowa. Well, on this play, you're going to see the weak tackle and weak guard, Gene Williams and Scott Armbrust, pull, block. And Williams just hides in behind him, breaks the tackle, and just keeps going. Boy, for a little guy, good power, Mark. Patterson, the fullback. The pitch goes to Williams, the tailback. Tries to find a hole, not much there, but he gets close to the 25. That will be a gain of about four or five. You know, so far today, Iowa has not really stopped Iowa State's running game. No, they have not. Now we see Teotis working against Mike Wells. Wells, very strong, breaks the two-time block and gets over in the area of the tackle, but did not figure in the play. Larry Blue in on the stop, according to our spotter, Tim Berry. Boy, he had a big one last year, recovering that fumble in the end zone for the tying touchdown. Otter with all sorts of time, now decides to put it away and go for it, and he should have the first down. Shades of Chris Peterson. Iowa State has two quarterbacks. I'll tell you what, he looked all over the field. He looked to his left, he looked to his right. Iowa had the Iowa State receivers tied up. There's one look. Now he comes back, takes another. Nobody open there. He feels some pressure and just runs out of it. 
Great savvy. Moses Santo finally uh, forces him down. And there's time out on the field as they call the chain gang on to measure this one. And it's a first down Iowa State at the 19. On the 19 yard line. Well, Bob Hutter's doing a great job right now running the show. He looks over and takes the play from the sideline. Five carries, 13 yards. Not a lot of rushing so far, but he had three attempts at the goal line just to get one yard. <laughs> one thing you know, Iowa State will not be calling any timeouts for the remainder of the half. Hutter used them all up in the first quarter. He puts Patterson in motion to the right side. Draw play goes to Williams. He's got the block inside the 10. Williams down to the Iowa seven or eight yard line. And it was another Williams who really made this play work. Gene Williams, the big 315 pound tackle, will get downfield and put a block on the Hawks. And while there he is right there, Sherman cuts right in behind him and it takes five Hawks to get him. Check the blocking from the end zone right here. If we have time. Wells pushed out of there by Teotis. Melvin Foster pushed out. Meanwhile, back to live action. Williams tries the right end. Very little there, if any. Down to the 11-minute mark. Left to play in the first half. 14-7 Iowa. And the Cyclones deep in Hawkeye territory. Second down and seven from the seven. This is a time when some of these veterans might be able to help Utter out just a little bit. As you pointed out, he's out of timeouts, and they're down in this critical area, so he needs to come up with some good plays. He has to come through now. Utter, slam pass, left belly, touchdown, Iowa State. The Cyclones have struck back. And what a rivalry we have today. Iowa having trouble with this little look-in pass that others throwing. Two-step drop, bango, right there. Ball crosses the plane, he's in, Mark. John Blotbelly literally backs his way into the end zone, and now it's going to be Shudak on to try to tie it up. Perfect seven of seven on the year. It's up, it's good, and it's a brand new game. We've got a barn burner here in Iowa City. 10.31 to go in the first half, and it's a brand new ball game. Iowa State marches up the field, 45 yards in just eight plays, a time of 2.51, and it was Utter to Glottfeldy. And there's a good look at the freshman Utter and John Glottfeldy, a senior from Ames, played his high school ball right there in town and decided to stay on and sign with the Cyclones. Former quarterback, right? You bet. It'll be Hughes and Antela back deep for Iowa to receive. This one headed down into the end zone, and I don't think that'll be returned as Hughes backs way up. Touchback. So Iowa starts out at their own 20-yard line. Dana Hughes, the old Iowa baseball player, just stepped back into deep center field and uh, caught it for the out. First and 10 at the 20 for the Hawks. See who's a tailback this time because Tony Stewart did the first two series, and there's Rogers. And then they brought on Nick Bell. And it looks like we're going to stay with Bell, and they're going to split set. And Rob, this time, comes to Montgomery, the fullback. Iowa ran that play out of a double tight end formation. Bill Lang, normally a tackle, wearing number one today, playing left tackle. He comes out of the ball game now, replaced by Falloon. But Lang, normally a tackle, hyperextended an elbow last week, Mark, and is wearing a brace. Second down and six of the 24, and Hughes goes in motion. And the draw play goes to Bell, and he's still on his feet. And another big 
Gaynor. This one doesn't go to Pater. But Bell gets the first down, and Iowa State has a man down. And maybe Larry Radigan, who is down on the turf. Here's another look at Bell. What power this guy has. Mark DeBrava paid for that one. He was the uh, tackler that was flattened. Well, Did not is, see the player who's down, though. It is not Radigan. I think it's Jim Doran. Six foot, 202 pound senior. If it's number 17, and I think it is. Well, that's going to hurt because he's the man replacing Dan Watkins, who couldn't play today for the Iowa State Cyclones. So they're going to start getting thin at the linebacker position if Thorne can't continue. Don't like the looks of it either because they're looking at his right knee, apparently. His dad, of course, a former Cyclone, played for the Detroit Lions. His brother, Land, also on the ball team. As you said, looking at that right knee. If Dorn can't go, they'll be down to their three deep. And it'll be Malcolm Goodwin coming in. Second quarter up in Michigan. The Wolverines on top of the Bruins, 21 to 6. Syracuse has forged into the lead up in the Carrier Dome, 7 0 over Pittsburgh. Frank Randall, the head trainer of Iowa State, helping go it off, and he's not limping too badly. That's a good sign. Well, that's great to see. Hopefully, he'll be able to get back in the ball game, and by the looks of it, uh, he probably will. Well, Nick Bell is a one-man wrecking crew for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Boy, he's had two draw plays, and one of them went for a TD, and this one goes for about 20 yards. Malcolm Goodwin uh, definitely in that linebacker now, replacing Dorn for the Cyclones. Want to know something about this? I coached him in baseball. <laughs> Is that right? In Little League Baseball. Has a twin brother named Matt. Good people. Great family. This time, Bell again. He plus one tackle, plus two tackles. Can anybody bring him down? Finally, hauled down by Kevin Lazard, a sophomore. But I don't think you can hit Nick Bell up high and, and do any damage. Well, it was your old baseball player, Goodwin, who hit him first, couldn't do anything. Then he ran through Marcus Robertson, the uh, preseason All-American, and he's having a good show this afternoon. Saunders and Lang come back in the Iowa lineup. Saunders will split out left. Bell today, 63 yards on just five carries. Second down and three at the 48-yard line. And Bell gets the call again. Goes outside, and look at this. <laughs> There's no hope. You can't take him one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Andrew Brock's trying to hit him up high, and you're not going to stop Nick Bell by hitting him there. Bell worked very hard during the offseason. A lot of distance running early on. There's Bugs trying to get him up around the shoulder pads, and as you can see, not effective. First down and then some. And Iowa will have possession at the Iowa State 41-yard line. Eight minutes, 55 seconds to play in the second quarter. It's dead even so far, 14 apiece. Hughes comes in motion. This time to hand off to Montgomery, the fullback. He gets two or three across the 40. Larry Radigan in on the stop for Iowa State. Lou, the All-State running back from East Waterloo. Hayden Fry said earlier this week that he's not a typical fullback, that they hope by the middle part of the season, defenses will have to be aware of him as a runner. So they can't key on people like Bell and Stewart. Next week, Iowa has to travel down to Miami. Iowa State will return home to host Western Michigan on Parents' Day. Here comes Bell again. First down across the 30. Well, I'm glad we're up here and not sitting down there in white jerseys because when he gets moving, he has a lot of momentum, but there's a flag down. Marcus Robertson finally gets credit for the tackle, but let's sort out the penalty right now and find out what it's all about. Jim Walden is really hot, Mark. He's in the face of the official on the far sideline, and he's really hot. Referee Jim Kemmerling. 
personal foul against Iowa State, and that's going to be a big one. Let's go to the far sideline right now, the Iowa State bench, for an update on Jim Dorn, and here's Tim Seaman. Frank Randall says that he can have Dorn back. It's not at this point looking like ligament damage, plenty of lateral movement in his right knee. Looked like maybe a blow above the knee, but he, I asked him, can you get him back? And he said, yeah. All right, good news for Jim Dorn. And thank you, Tim Seaman from KCAU. Big penalty. Moves the ball down to the 15-yard line where it's first and 10 for Iowa. Tony Stewart back in at tailback. They've got to give Bell a rest sometime. And the draw goes to Stewart. And he's not too big to tackle. Well, Goodwin moved in there and made the first, the initial hit, slowed him down, and then there was nowhere for him to go. Here's Stewart, number 21. A little delay. Baxley, 78, blocking outside. And there's uh, Malcolm Goodwin, number 40. If you hear the booing, it's because Jim Wallen continues to talk to the officials. Very upset about that penalty one play ago. Wallen's probably saying, hey, all we're trying to do is bring him down. <laughs> that may be the impossible dream for Iowa State today. Rogers to Stewart. Down to the five for the six-yard line where his gang got a bound. And this will be close to a first down. Iowa runs this one out of the single back formation. The single back was not Tony Stewart. It was Lou Montgomery. Stewart is out here on your left in a uh, slot position. He gets open. Takes it down deep into Cyclone territory. Tony Stewart. And they're going to measure right here. And this one may be very, very close. First down. First and goal to go for the Hawkeyes. This one may go down to who scores last. They're going up and down the field, aren't they? And look who's coming back in now. Stewart goes out. And Nick Bell comes back. And look at the hands he's getting from his teammates. What a player. Montgomery at fullback. Bell at tailback. Here comes Big Nick. Fumble! Iowa State recovers at the goal line. Coming up with the football, number 67, Todd Miller. Wow, I thought he had the TD, but he forgot the ball. Here it is from the end zone. Iowa just pushed Iowa State inside. He pulls over a couple people. The hit, the ball comes loose, and Miller's on top of it. Give Mark DeBrava credit for knocking that ball loose. Watch it again, ground level. Oh, nice hit. And you knew immediately that Nick Bell also knew he forgot the football. Iowa State now, with their backs against the wall, they need to get some working room. And the handoff to the fullback. Patterson, and gets him two or three. What a big, big play. I was talking with Robin Ross, the defensive coordinator for Iowa State yesterday, and he said, that's what we need. We need to force some turnovers. You know, in two games, they'd only gotten one turnover, and that was a fumble against UNI. Well, the turnovers now are even and one apiece. Iowa State fumbled away the football in their first possession of the day. Hunter with a delay handoff to Williams. Just ate him alive. There will be a loss of about two on the play, and Iowa State will be back at the one. There's also a flag down on this play. Well, motion penalty against Iowa State. It can only be half the distance to the goal, and I think they will decline it. Here's the play, Hunter going back, little delay, hands off to Williams. Matt Ruland from Hilbert, Wisconsin, meets him and pushes him back. 
says, how do you do? How's the family? <laughs> Boy, he is, he's a big guy. 6'5", 273 pounder. Big play right here. Quick pass, complete, out to the five yard line. Otter hits Chris Spencer. Now there was some confusion with the down markers. Let's see if it's fourth down now or just third. I guess it's third. They must have taken the penalty. Brings up a third down and six. And another thing to keep in mind right now is Iowa State does not have any timeouts remaining here in the first half. Third down and six with your backs to the wall. The pitch. Oh, a quick kick. Get a flag. A quick punt. Whistles blow. John, you better get your rule book out. We're about to see anything from Jim Walden here. The flag flew immediately. And let's see what the penalty is all about. That was Jason Williams with the quick kick. And how long has it been since we've seen that? I'll tell you what, Iowa may have a decision to make here. Dead ball, dead ball. No, it's a dead ball. Well, the play never happened, so that will cost them half the... All right, they reset the clock six seconds because the play should not have taken place. And a dead ball false start cannot be declined, so they will assess the penalty. That will cost them half the distance. It will go back to the two-and-a-half-yard line if there is such a thing. <laughs> It'll be third down and about eight-and-a-half now. And the clock has been reset to 5.36. Well, I wonder what's up Jim Walden's sleeve this time. I think you go for it now. You pass the football. Nobody in the backfield. You know he's going to pass. Hunter throwing to Glotfelli at the nine. And Iowa State will come up about a yard or two short. And now it's time to punt the football and you have a little room to work with Gary Clark in on the coverage if my memory serves me correctly John I think this is the first time Iowa State's punted all day I believe it is John Schnorr in to do the duty is a left-handed punter left-handed left-footed make that Doug Book back to receive the cyclone punt and let's see what this is about Thank you, thank you. Resetting the 25-second clock. 4.56 to play in the first half. John Snoor, four punts, averaging only 37 yards per punt as long as the 48-yarder, but he does have the win at his back. And as we said, Doug Book, the deep back for Iowa. 25 second clock down to five. And plenty of time, and he hits a high hanger. It's a dandy. And Book takes it at his own 35 and has nowhere to go. And he is just held there until help comes. So Iowa starts out inside their own 35 yard line with 424 to go in the first half. Iowa will take over just short of their own 35-yard line after perhaps the longest punt of John Snorer's career. A 63-yard punt and no return. Hello, everybody. We're way up high here, John. Get over here. Everybody can see you. You're on TV, but <laughs> here's Bell again, and he gets back to about the original line of scrimmage and little if anything else. Dan Milner, the nose or the middle linebacker for Iowa State, you know the stop. Mark, we should note that Jim Dorn back in the lineup now for the Iowa State Cyclones, that linebacker, so that's good news. Nick Bell today, 79 yards on eight carries. Second down and nine, give him one on that last play. And now an audible from Rogers at the line. He spreads balloon out farther wide to the right side, and Rogers 
He's going to air it out. Over the middle. Complete to Falloon or not? Incomplete. Broke it up. Well, that's good football on both sides. You see Falloon is going to come back and go to the pass, but great defense also by the Cyclone defender. There's Rogers looking to his right. Great defense there. I believe that's Robertson. Yes, it is. Marcus Robertson on the defense. Rogers now five of seven on the day. He's only missed twice. Third down and nine. He'll probably air it out of here. This one's a quick one out to Bauer. He misses it. Simply dropped it. And the Hawkeyes will be forced to punt. That's not like Nick. He has a good set of hands for a big man. He came out of a wing position to catch that ball. Bell once caught 13 passes against Indiana two years ago. That's an Iowa record. Well, let's see if Hayden Fly has any tricks up his sleeve. Don't think you'd do it right here on your own 35. Isaacs, end over ender. Is it touched? Nope, I don't believe so. No indication from the officials. Summer. No. The officials say it's Iowa State football. It looked like for a moment there that maybe Jason Williams touched the football. Hayden Fry thinks so. And let's take a look at the replay. Well, number 47 who snapped the ball, Steve Bro. It's going to come downfield now. Ball comes loose. I don't think he touched it. Hard to tell from this angle, but Bro definitely made the, is there. Well, the crowd thought he may have. That's why the noise. Iowa State takes over on their own 35. And Williams runs into a brick wall at the 35. He ran into Rod Davis is who he ran into. There was nowhere to go on that play. Rod Davis, a big 260-pound junior nose guard. Same high school as the Harmon brothers, Mark. It's that eastern pipeline that Iowa's had over the years. Brought in some great players here. Three minutes exactly left to play in the first half. And it's still a tie game with 14 all. across the 45. First down. Spencer hurting just a little bit down there. He took a shot. Well, that would be a big blow for Iowa State's fortunes this year. And he is hurt. Yeah, Iowa State counted so much on him when he came in. Then he hurt his knee two years ago in practice. You can see he still wears the brace. Here's the play again. Utter takes the snap from Teotis. Three-step drop, fires it. Spencer has it. Oh, little twist. Gary Clark on the tackle. Well, while the trainers look at Chris Spencer, let us look at some scores from other games. Second quarter, Michigan leading UCLA 21 to 12, and apparently Spencer is going to be all right. Syracuse up seven to three over Pittsburgh, and Virginia may not lose one all year. They've got a pretty soft schedule from here on out after battling Clemson in their opener. First and ten, Iowa State, and the ball spotted at the Cyclone 49. Our game is dead even, 14 all. 2.44 to go in the first half. But Iowa State cannot stop the clock. They're on a timeout. Only a three-man rush. Hunter with plenty of time and takes off. And he gets up to the Iowa 45-yard line. A flag down on the play, and we may have holding against Iowa State. That appears to be the call holding on State. Keep an eye on the tackle on the right side of the screen there. Yep. Gene Williams, 72. He gets him around the back. 
can't do that. Gene, of course, uh, played guard last year, has moved outside to tackle. The place vacated by Keith Sims, who now starts for the Miami Dolphins. Big man, 314. The penalty stops the clock with 232 to go in the first half. And now they're trying to figure out where the ball should be spotted. And originally they had only marked off five yards. And the Iowa players caught it and said, whoa, we got to go back a little more. So it's first and 20 officially, and the ball will be spotted on the Cyclone 39. And now the clock is started. Two and a half minutes to go first half. Single back in the backfield, Sherman Williams for Iowa State. Three wideouts put to the left. Williams tries to cut around the right side. And he's snagged by Moses Santos and dropped for a loss. Just good defense. Quick enough. Yeah, good defensive play by Santos. Comes across, boxes in, doesn't let the man get outside. 6'3, 236, another player from New York. Loss of three on the play brings up third and 23. Iowa really has a New York New Jersey connection, don't they, John? They have a great pipeline out there. Nobody in the backfield as Williams goes in motion. Carter wants to throw, goes out to Williams, up to the 40, and nothing else. Still about 19 shy of the first down. You know, we were talking about that Eastern pipeline. Here's the replay. Utter. Just a quick fire outside. And now you got to contend with some great speed, some great vision. Well, now the Hawkeyes call timeout. They want to stop the clock because Hayden Fry would like to have his hands on the football one more time before intermission. So the clock is stopped with 125 left to play. No conference going on with Paul Foster. Let's go down to the Hawkeyes sideline and Eric Nelson. Eric? Okay, Mark, one of the things that Iowa defensive line coach Ted Gill is telling his people up front is to get your hands up because Utter is short. He takes those quick drop backs and he gets rid of the ball real quickly. So look for the Iowa lineman to try and deflect some passes. He's only 5'11". Back to you guys. Good, Good point. point. Good point. We were talking about that Eastern Pipeline. Bernie Wyatt was a great recruiter for Iowa out there. He now has gone up to Wisconsin, Mark. So it's going to be interesting to see if Iowa can keep that Eastern connection. Iowa State on third down conversions today, one of four. Iowa on third down conversions, 0 of two. So it hasn't been very productive for either team today on third down. Third and 19 for Iowa State right here with a mile to go. And Williams doesn't pick that mile up. He gets across midfield. But Iowa State will still be about eight or nine yards shy of the first down. And I would assume that Jim Walden will punt the football. Scott Plates, you know, the tackle. Now, I, when I say assume, you always have to say that when you're referring to Jim Walden's team. Because you never really know for sure. Price says you always have to prepare that he's oh. going to throw in a wrinkle or two. Well, right now, Jim Walden's just laying the 25-second clock run down. They'll take the penalty. It won't help uh, or hurt their punting attempt, but it will eat up a lot more of the time. 25 second clock expires here. Here will be the flag. And the game clock is still rolling. Good Ooh. coaching on the part of the Cyclones there. They don't want to give Iowa any more time than they have to. You know, I think Iowa really lost a couple of seconds on the game clock there. I think they were late in stopping it. But in any, any result, we are now 33 seconds away from halftime. Doug Book back to receive the punt. Schnoor's had a 63 yard. He's got one block. Inside the 
15. It's Eddie Pauling that comes up with it. Merton Hanks on the block, Mark. Merton Hanks, that is the fifth block kick in his career. Here he comes from the right side of your screen, knocks it down, and then it's a chase for the ball at number 27, Eddie Pauley is the first man there. Big break for the Hawkeyes with 31 seconds to go. Just what Jim Walden did not want. Taking the delay of game penalty to eat up time on the clock. And there is Burton Hanks at Iowa, first and 10 on the 17 of the Cyclones. Hughes goes in motion. Rogers throws the foul, and he's dropped immediately by Jim Dorn. And now Iowa will call time out to stop the clock because Bell did not get out of bounds. Here's Rogers. He's got his man, Nick Bell, Jim Dorn on the stop. And a good ball may have been tipped, and he still caught it. 29 seconds left to play in the half. Iowa down to their final timeout now. They'll have one remaining. Aiden Fry has the troops gathered around. Number 12 is Jim Hartley, the backup quarterback for the Hawkeyes. 16, Paul Burmeister from here in Iowa City West. Iowa State had their very first punt of the season partially blocked. It was deflected against Northern Iowa. There's the time remaining. Jim Walden having a little conference with the side judge. Boy, John, I don't see any empty seats up there anywhere. And unlike some of the previous years, nobody's leaving by halftime. No, nobody's leaving. Nobody's going out to get an early hot dog either. Second down and five. It's at the 13-yard line. 29 seconds left to play first half. Hughes in motion again. And Rogers on the rollout again. Does he get out of bounds? He does. That'll stop the clock with 19 seconds to go. Well, that's probably the best thing he did on this play is getting out of bounds. He was looking downfield. Iowa State had his people uh, covered. Lou Montgomery down there. Michael Tentley should make that. And now he just tucks it under his arm, and he knows he's got to get out of bounds to stop that clock. They only have one timeout left. Well, you have to figure that Iowa certainly will end up putting points on the board because they're well within range of Jeff Skillett's field goal attempt. Here's the big man, Bell, and he is wrapped up by Robertson, just about the line of scrimmage. And now Iowa may call their final timeout, and it's decision time for Hayden. Well, it's hard to believe that play took only two seconds, but that's all that went off the clock. They go to the big guy. No hole on the right side, so he ducks in left side. Robertson and crew there to stop him. He's going to bring up a fourth down and one. And even if they get that one, can they reset in time then to try the field goal, or will they try to get a second playoff and maybe have Rodgers throw it out of bounds to stop the clock? It would seem... If they get the first down, the clock will stop on the chains of move. That doesn't set up, that doesn't give them much time to set up a field goal team. Well, obviously the question here, both coaches, neither one of them wants to go down trailing at halftime into the locker room. But I think can't enter into a situation like this where one team's knocking on the door. No matter what happens, somebody's going to feel good, somebody's going to feel badly going to the halftime locker room. Well, the last time Iowa was down here, remember the big fumble recovery by the Iowa State Cyclones. They stopped them once. They asked for a measurement. It's less than a yard. Clock is stopped. 17 seconds left to play first half. And... Hartley comes into the ball game now also. I don't see Rogers in there. Well, so Skillet's coming in. It looks like they're going to kick. Jim Hartley is on the field. 
Well, like you said, it looks like they're going to kick. It looks like they're going to kick. It will be a 25-yard attempt. Just a chip shot for Skillet. And it's good. But Iowa State will get their hands on the football because 12 seconds remain. Iowa has forged on top 17-14. I don't know if both teams are going to feel good or bad going to the locker room now. Iowa State's going to be lifted somewhat, stopping Iowa from finding the end zone. Iowa's going to feel good. They did get three out of it instead of six. Aiden Fry and Jeff Skillet talking things over. Iowa obviously decided they could not run the ball. Even if they got the first down, they wouldn't have time to set up their field goal team. They didn't want to take a chance at throwing it to the end zone or throwing it anywhere and having the interception. Because then you, then you really take the wind out of your sails. Plus, you have to look at it like when they start the second half because Iowa State, or Iowa deferred, and Iowa State received at the opening kickoff. Iowa will likely get their hands on the football first in the second half. Iowa State will have the wind at their back. And the last time Skillet kicked off, it was very short, you might recall. Well, that was good for Jeff Skillett to hit that, too, because in the opening game, he missed two field goals, the only two he tried. That's one reason you saw the picture of Hayden Fry with his arm draped around this young man, because he's counting on him. He needs Jeff Skillett to hit field goals this year. Skillett has a strong leg. He just needs to hit some to get that confidence up. Into the wind. And if anything, the wind has picked up here this afternoon. Started out about 20th game time. And has increased as the afternoon is wore on. And another line drive, and this one will be picked up by Iowa State, just about the 23. And it's Lamont Hill that gets it up across the 30. And Iowa State will have time for one play. Six seconds left on the halftime clock. 17-14, Iowa leading Iowa State. And what so far has been a dandy. Great game so far. Great game. Both teams moving the ball well. We've seen the freshman quarterback for Iowa State doing very well in his first half of college ball. Utter just barely downs the ball, and that is the end of the first half. So both teams will regroup, go to the halftime locker rooms. And the rivalry is everything it should be. A three-point game with the Iowa Hawkeyes leading Iowa State 17 to 14. All right, let's check in with some other scores from around the country this afternoon. First of all, second quarter, Michigan leading UCLA 21 to 12. That one may be closer than other people have imagined. Syracuse has opened up an 11-point edge over Pittsburgh now, 14-3, that game at Syracuse. And look at this, an upset in the making. In the second, Mississippi leading Arkansas, 7-6. Virginia all over Duke this afternoon, 38-0, still only in the second quarter. Iowa coming back onto the field in this one right now. And the Hawkeyes leading the Cyclones 17-14 as we get ready for the start of the third quarter. There's a good look at Hayden Fry in his 12th year here at Iowa. Checking the wind, Mark. Always checking the wind. And it's really blowing right now. Iowa, of course, won the toss at the start of the game. Hayden against Iowa State, 8-3. Iowa defer their decision here on the second half to start things out. They'll take the football as you look at Jim Walden on the far side. 15 and 20 at Iowa State. That's what old quarterbacks do, isn't it? Lick their fingers like that. Yep, Both yep. these coaches, uh, former college quarterback Walden at Wyoming, Aiden Fry at Baylor. Iowa State will have the wind at their back as they open the third, but the Hawkeyes will have the football. <laughs> And just before that halftime gun, Jeff Skillett 
in that 25-yard field goal to give Iowa the three-point advantage. That, of course, was set up by the great uh, block punt by Burton Hanks, the recovery by Eddie Pauley. Had that not happened, Iowa State might have gotten out of here with a tie in the first half. 70,389 on hand here to, at Kinnick today. What's the old record? Well, just in case you were curious, 67,700. Next week, Iowa travels to take on nationally ranked Miami's Hurricanes. Iowa State will return home to Cyclone Stadium to play host to Western Michigan. Jeff Shudak getting ready to kick off. It'll be Dana Hughes is one of the deep backs. The other one is going to be Jeff Abel. So, we'll do it again. Remember a couple of years ago over names when the ball blew off the tee mark? I think, I think Howland from Iowa was approaching the ball when it went to it and it blew off. That was a cold, windy, dark day over there. It was. Here we go, second half off and running. Headed down towards Hughes, takes it at the two. Up to the 20. And a couple more, and that's where he's driven back. Ted Johnson, Ted Johnson get on the stop for Iowa State. And we'll see who Aiden Fry is going with here in the second half. He started with Tony Stewart, and Stewart is in there, as you see. Rodgers, 6 of 9, 61 yards, and a TD toss to Michael Titley early in the ballgame. So it's going to be Stewart and Montgomery. And Stewart will start out in the slot to the left side. And Rogers to air it out. First play, second half complete. To the 30. And complete to Titley again. Well, as Mark said, Stewart was out on the slot on your left. He kind of clears it out, and Titley comes in underneath for the reception. The pros are looking at Michael Titley. Mark, good size, good speed. Only in the second year here in Iowa, J.C. transfer. This time, Iowa back to the eye. The pitch goes to Stewart. Tries the right side. Nothing there. No gain on that play. Jeff Bauer, the strong safety, also came up to put the tattoo on Stewart. Stewart has had good games against Iowa State. Two years ago, 32 carries, 194 yards. Last year, 18 carries, 99 yards. They bring in the other tight end now, Bill Lang. And they'll go from the eye. Third down at a long one at the 32. Play action fake, Rodgers on the option, going for everything. And now the flag, there'll be pass interference on that. And I don't think there's any doubt. Sean Walker, a sophomore quarterback, mugs Danon Hughes. Great call here by the Hawkeyes. Everybody thought they'd run it. Instead, they change up the rollout. Hughes was open. You have to wonder... As you look at this, no, you don't have to wonder at all. I thought maybe the sun had gotten in Sean Walker's eyes, but he just wrapped his man up. He really wasn't playing the ball there, Mark, and he paid for it. Well, Jim Walden has sent in Andrew Barks to replace Walker, who was a starter today, and I'm sure the defensive coaches don't like that. Gives Iowa the first down at their own 46. No doubt about that one either. Travis Block with a fast start. Let's see if he was drawn or not. A 
offside against Block. That'll cost offside Iowa State five. Iowa State. Now the ball is into Cyclone territory. They'll spot it down to the 49. On the defense, still first down. First and five for the Hawkeyes from the Iowa State 49. That may change the play when you get down to a first and five situation. Montgomery, and he's tripped or slips up as he crosses the line of scrimmage, gets one or two. This time you're going to see Tony Stewart doing the blocking. He down here tries to kick his man outside. And Montgomery basically just stumbles. Second down and four, a gain of one on the play because they started out first and five. Hughes goes in motion. across the 35-yard line. Iowa really seals well on the inside here. Sean Smith, 22, coming back on the crack back block. And Montgomery picks up big yardage around the left side. Lou Montgomery, a sophomore from Waterloo, had seven carries, 45 yards last week. They're averaging over six yards a carry. First and ten at the 35. Stewart, right side, and a couple. Tackle made by Matt Grubb for Iowa State. Grubb having a good year for the Iowa State Cyclones. He's played for them several years. Seen a lot of action. He smells this one out and just moves right in the hole. Stewart basically has nowhere to go. You probably heard that hit on your TV during the live action. Montgomery, the only setback in the backfield. Stewart lined up slot right. Rogers over the middle. And it is incomplete. A skip pass that bounces in to Sean Smith's hands. Well, Iowa State showed a lot of pressure this time. They're coming with their outside guys. Rogers dropping back. Little crossing pattern over the middle. He steps up and fires. He just fires it short. No catch. He trapped out there. Iowa Hawkeyes, one of four in third down conversions. They got a big one here. Third and seven at the Cyclone 32. I don't think he made it. He should be a couple shy. Now do you punt or try a field goal into the wind? Or do you go for it? No, look where the ball's at. He's three or four shy. They're talking it over. Saunders is going to come into the ball game. You know, there's a name we haven't mentioned much today. They're going to go for it. Fourth and three at the 27, and Iowa going for it. Play action fake. Rogers on a rollout. First down. Very well executed by the Iowa Hawkeyes right here. A little play action to Stewart. Throws a few of the linebackers there, as you saw. And now he's just rolling out to the right side. Greg Agater, number 73, out in front of him. Lou Montgomery takes a defensive man. And Matt just packs it under the arm and takes it in for the first down. Matt's uh, Father Jimmy here watching today. Gutsy call and a big play for Iowa. First and 10 on the 18-yard line. Stewart straight up the middle. And nice yardage. Stewart. Inside the 15 to the 14 yard line, be a gain of about four. There's the handoff, and watch the hit coming up here by Matt Reberg. It is face to face, ladies and gentlemen. 
And Reberg wins it at 6'4", 265 against 6'1", 209. Stewart, 12 carries, 46 yards. And now Rodgers on the roll. He has the first down inside the 10. Down to the 7-yard line. And Iowa knocking on the door again. Well, that was the old option play. He had Tony Stewart out there. He could have pitched it, kept it, picked up good yardage. You know, he didn't run that much in high school, Mark, out in Walpole, Massachusetts. He was much, pretty much a passer. Last week against Cincinnati, he ran nine times, 38 yards. Three First touches. downs, Iowa with 14, Iowa State with 10. First and goal, Stewart. Stacked up at about the six-yard line. Matt Grubb over to greet him. Iowa State does a good job defending this play. Just the basic pitch out here to Stewart. Everything just bottled up inside. Pulls a leg free for a couple of yards, but that's it. Saunders goes in motion. Rodgers. Touchdown, Iowa! A new look here from the power eye, but it's the same play. Rodgers, Tony Stewart behind him, gets outside his man, takes it in. Number 46 with Larry Radigan not being able to make the play. That's for sure Rob Baxley didn't make the play here. What a block, number 78. Yeah, he drives his man off the ball. That was Grubb, I believe. And Rodgers scores, and they put the extra point up. They're going to third, and Iowa's three-point lead has grown to ten. We look at Matt Rogers, and now it's Bob Utter's turn to direct the Cyclones. They'll go with Trips Wright. Three wide receivers, one setback in the backfield, that being Sherman Williams. And he's not going to stay long. He goes in motion. And a fumble snap. And it's still loose. And it may be Iowa football. It is. Well, Teotis is the center. Somewhere they don't get the handle on it. And that's a big break for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Tough break for the Cyclones. Iowa State doesn't even get their hands on the football before Iowa's knocking on the door for the second consecutive time this afternoon. They take over at the Cyclone 21. I don't know if that's a freshman error, John, but that certainly is an error of repetition, having a new person behind you. time Montgomery gets the call and he gets a couple inside the 20 to about the 18. Dan Milner the middle linebacker makes the stop for Iowa State. That was a problem the Iowa Hawkeyes had last year Matt Rogers Mike Devlin really had trouble hooking up on the uh, center snaps and it cost them this year we haven't seen it happen yet as you point out two new people working together and that uh, as we if we look back at this game if Iowa goes on and wins it that might be the turning point right there. Second and seven at the 18, I formation. Stewart finds a little daylight. He's still going inside the five. Touchdown, Tony Stewart. I want you to watch the tight end, Michael Titley. He really seals to the inside right there. Look at Nice move by Stewart. And then 
Bodies all the way into the end zone for the Iowa Touch. Skillet on to attempt the point after Tony Stewart right there. The man of the hour. The point after. Right on target. And Iowa pulls away from Iowa State to a 31-14 lead. And we still have 8.08 to go in the third. That's because there's 8.08 to go in the third. But Iowa is certainly forging out to a sizable margin now, 31-14. When Iowa State's defensive team came off the field, Mark, after that touchdown, Jim Walden was out on the field trying to encourage these young men, don't give up now, don't give up the ship. There's a lot of time left to play. Skillet set to kick off. Picked up. Inside the 10, and Iowa State gets it out to about the 25, 26 yard line. Cyclones having difficulty hanging on to the football here this afternoon. Well, we talked a little bit about the difference that the turf makes, and the ball certainly doesn't. The football never bounces, it's very true, but on turf, it's even, it's even less predictable how it's going to bounce. And as you said, Iowa State has had trouble picking it up. A little brouhaha like we had at the outset of the game. But this one goes nowhere, and Iowa State will start out at their own 25-yard line. Bob Hunter, number 18, the freshman. He's trying to grab a hold of the football before he starts backing out of there. You can bet that. Play action fake. Hunter on the rollout, turns the corner, and gets about 10 yards. And boy, he is really hit as he dives forward. And he has the first down. Really ran with authority that time, I thought, Mark. Came out of the uh, snap. Comes around here. Rulin misses him. Nice cutback block on Rod Davis. Leroy Smith can't get him. Melvin Foster finally tips him up. A 12-yard gain all the way to the 37-yard line. Williams. Tries to go off left tackle, and he gets about three to the 40. No miss snap that time. His utter hands off to Williams. And he beats a few Hawks. Second down and seven. Mahoney goes in motion. Williams, a correction, Patterson, the fullback, gets the first handoff. And he gets three or four. It looked like Iowa was slanting right into this play, Mark. They guessed right on defense, and it really wasn't going anywhere. Moses Santo in there, Jeff Rulin, Bell Foster, a lot of black jerseys. Sundiata Patterson, the fullback. Iowa State staying with the I formation here. Third down and two. Big play for the Cyclones. Williams gets the pitch and the first down. Right to the midfield strike. Rod Davis, the Iowa nose guard, makes the stop. Funny thing is, nobody is leaving yet. Even though we are winding towards the fourth quarter in Iowa by 17. A sold out record crowd. 70,389. Mark Matthew and John Campbell bringing you the action. Quarterback draw and a sack. We have flags. It's going to be an offside penalty. correct that illegal motion Iowa State to call now let's see if Iowa wants the yardage or the down and Hayden's over there frantically telling Jim Johnson decline decline 
bad illegal shift on the offense. Penalties declined. Second down. So that brings up second down and 14 now on the 46-yard line. As you look at Hayden Fry. Both wide receivers for Iowa State split to the near side. And off goes to Williams, back to midfield, about to the original line of scrimmage. Matt Rulin there in on the stop. Iowa doing a better job now in the middle. Early on in the game, that was kind of a soft spot for the Hawkeyes. The Cyclones were taking advantage of it. Iowa State, two of six on third down conversions. And this one is a third and ten at midfield. Blotfelli and Moore split wide to the right side. Mahoney, the tight end, in motion. Hunter had his man, but he can't hang on. Sherman Williams dropped the ball, but Eddie Polly was right there to make sure. The defense by the Hawkeyes. I'll tell you what, if Hunter had looked downfield, he would have seen Craig Mahoney wide open. Instead, he comes over on the near side, and the ball comes loose. Even if it was caught, it would not have been enough for the first down. Fourth and ten. See if Iowa State tries anything tricky here. They may let the 25-second clock wind out. Yep, big punt. And Iowa was ready. Marvin Seiler got the snap and had nowhere to go. I believe it's Burton Hanks. Let's watch that. The snap to the short man. Look at Hanks. All over him. Disrupts the play. Now Eddie Polly's coming in. And Siler has nowhere to go. How's that for your first varsity snap? Marvin Siler, the backup quarterback today, takes the heat. The question is, was that called from the bench or called by Siler? Because the up back in that situation has a chance to read the play and make the call. In any event, it is Iowa football on the Cyclone 38. And Tony Stewart is off to the races. One man to beat. Down inside the 10. Officially, they'll mark him down at the 9-yard line. Stewart here weave his way through some cyclones. They're going to miss some tackles. Maybe the best thing that happened on this play was a no block. Dana Hughes gets his block, but watch Balloon. He stays off the back of his man. Would have been a clip right there. He stays off of him, and Stewart takes it down to the nine. Three missed tackles by Iowa State. That wasn't a run. That was a tour. <laughs> Dana Hughes in motion. Rogers on the rollout, looking, keeping. Inside the five to the three. And Iowa State's defense has suddenly folded. Well, our producer, Bob Helmers, just said no replays. We don't need one. This is exactly what the Hawkeyes did the last time they were down here, Mark. It just sweep right. Good look at Matt Rogers wearing that sun visor, so to speak. What it helps him see, and the second thing is it prevents the defense from seeing where his eyes are focused on which receiver it also causes for a very hot helmet inside that helmet Stewart in motion this time Rogers keeps gets to the one and I think he was down as the ball pops loose Jeff Bauer gets credit for the tackle You'll think to Lou Montgomery, then try to follow him through the hole. Number 60, Mike Devlin there. Cyclones come up, nice defensive play to stop Rodgers from getting in. Tell you what, that offensive line right now is really doing its job. Third and goal. Stewart drops the football. 
recovered by Iowa, I believe. Yeah, Stewart never got control of that ball. The Hawkeyes hold on to the football, but now it's fourth and goal from the three. Just a quick pitch here to Tony Stewart. He's going to cut back. Ball comes loose. And I can't see who got it, Mark. Well, in any event, we have time to talk things over. 2.40 to go in the third. Time out on the field. Iowa leads by 17. Jeff Skillett is on to attempt what appears to be about a 19-yard field goal. Jim Hartley will hold. High snap. And the kick does not make it. But a flag is down. Bad news for Iowa State. Running into the kicker. That's Jim Hartley holding. Got the holder. Well. <laughs> That's going to give Iowa a new life. It's going to give them a first down. I don't know about that. I didn't think he got it. Kicker on the defense, half the distance. First well, down. under the rule, I guess they both have the protection now. Now it's going to be fourth and one. Well, I believe it'll be a first down. Now another flag. I think Walden got in a, a word on the sideline. Oh, Jim Walden. He's hot. Has just got penalized. Oh, unsportsmanlike conduct on the Iowa State bench. Jim Walden said something. And that will be a big costly mistake. Oh. Let's go down to Tim Seaman on the sideline. Tim? I'll tell you what, Mark, I was right beside Jim Paulden when that episode occurred. He was upset first because he said the man ran into the blocker, not the kicker. And secondly, he was upset. He plugged his nose. I won't tell you the word he said, but he plugged his nose. And that pretty much sums up his feelings right now. Mark? Here we go. Hand off to Montgomery. Touchdown, Iowa. It was first and goal from the one with the penalty. And the Hawkeyes make them pay. Simple play. Lou Montgomery over the top. And the Hawkeyes have six more. Uh, Jim Walden may be right in the fact that Iowa State ran into the holder and not the kicker, but the rule says either are protected now, or both are protected. Here's Skillet. Point after. This time, it is good. Holder, according to the officials, and we have checked with the sideline official, the holder is protected just like the kicker. So Jim Walden was upset. He was right that the kicker wasn't touched, but the holder was. And he let his emotions get the best of him, and it cost him even more yardage. 38 to 14. Iowa leading now. Still 2.34 to go in the third as we check other scores. Syracuse on top of Pittsburgh in the fourth quarter, 20 to 12. In the second, Mississippi still edging Arkansas in what would be a major upset. I'll tell you what, Mark, Jim Walden's a competitor and he's still hot down there and he's still walking down towards that side, Judge, and uh, let him have it a little bit. All right, let's update this score right now. We told you it was 7-6 moments ago. Now it is halftime, and Mississippi has forged on top by 5, 14-9. And Jeff Skillett's getting quite a workout here in the second half, kicking off. Well, Iowa's come out and just dominated this game in the third quarter. They 
gambled once on a fourth down, got a first down, went for the touchdown. Iowa State tried that fake punt. And I can't believe that Siler was the man who called that. That would be hard for me to believe. 38 to 14. And another squibber picked up short. And this one picked up by Patterson. Patterson, a fullback, grabs it, gets it to the 40. Eddie Polly was the man down there on the stop, and he gave him a good pop. And now, Bob Utter has to figure out how to get this uh, Iowa State offense running. All set back is Sherman Williams. And he gets the delay handoff, cuts through the hole, gets five up to the 45. Scott Plate in on the stop. Watch the big guys top of your screen. They're going to pull. That's uh, Williams and Armbrust. Gene Williams working on John Derby. And a lot of black jerseys at the end of the play. Look at this. In the third quarter, the total offense, Iowa 115 yards. Iowa State only four. Add a couple for that last play. And Williams again, this time to the 49. Gain of about four. Well, they just came back with the exact same play and picked up good yardage. Yep, Nelson, number 93, in on the stop. Given that Iowa State has managed nine yards on this possession, that means Iowa State has netted 13 yards in the third quarter. It has not been a good quarter for the Cyclones. Third down and two at Iowa State. Only two of seven in third down conversions. And I don't know if they have this one. It is close. Should have it. And they do. The official spot at the Iowa 49. A minute, 10 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Jim Walden licking his chops over there. Hunter. Nobody open. Finally comes back against the grain, intended for Spencer, and a bit under throw, incomplete. And all the time in the world, though. Yes, he did. Uh, great blocking job up front by the Iowa State offensive line. Williams, Armbrust, Musman, Teotis, and Scartweet. But nobody opened downfield for him. His mother, Mary Jane Utter, here at the game today, watching her son in his first collegiate start. Bob Utter, 10 of 14, 104 yards, and the call those came in the first half. Yeah. 48 seconds left to play in the third quarter on the stop clock by the incomplete pass. Utter to throw again. He's got pressure from the backside. He's passed a lot of scrimmage and runs out of bounds. May have had a late hit over there, but he's okay. And Utter, I believe, let's see where they spot it. He should have the first down. Let's watch this hit. Jim Wald and, and his coaching staff on the far sideline, very upset. They think that the hit was way out of bounds. And that's Leroy Smith pushing him. He was definitely out of bounds when, when Smith hit him. I don't think it was as flagrant as everybody thought, though. His I momentum took him more than anything on that play. Smith was in, in the air trying to make the stop by about the same time Utter stepped out. Here comes the measurement. And it is first down, Iowa State. 41 seconds on the stop clock to go to the third. 38-14. That man there, good coach, but he still hasn't won a game against the Big Ten team yet. Asked him about that at his weekly press conference. He didn't seem to want to talk about it too much. Didn't think it was any big thing, but at Washington State and at Iowa State, he has not beaten a Big Ten opponent. Of course, he he'll, he'll probably look you up after he does. Yeah. At Iowa State or Washington State. Whoa, here's timeout. Bob Utter. 
used all three of the first half timeouts in the first quarter and doesn't like this look and he uses one right here Jim Wallace said hey we were playing Ohio State for the most part when I was in Washington State and those were all perennial power teams so you can understand that a little bit but Minnesota's been a nemesis for him. Yeah, the last two years, I know he was frustrated with that game last year, and then, of course, last week up in, in uh, Minneapolis, they played the great first half, had some key injuries later on, didn't play as well in the second half. Probably two games, I know two games, he thinks they should have won. Well, if numbers tell the story, Iowa State should have won last week because they dominated in all statistical categories just about. Held Minnesota, scoreless in the first half. Aiden Fry, what a marvelous job he has done here at Iowa. Tell you one thing, I would not want to be duped today. I wouldn't want to be broadcasting that game today. Here's Nick Bell warming up on the sidelines. Rob Baxley. Question is, how come? How come Stewart is playing ahead of him today when Bell has done so marvelously in the first half? Here's Hunter. He's going long. He's got his man. Black Valley touchdown. What a pass from Bob Hunter to John Black Valley. And it was right on stride. Little play action right there to Williams. Gonna turn around. And he had his man all the way. Black Valley. Great play by the Cyclones. And what a comeback. When everything was going wrong, Mark, they come up with a big play. Shows a pretty good arm on that play, too. Sure does. That was a rope. Lotfelly now with two touchdowns on the day. And the point after? So the shoe back is good. So now it's a 38-21 game. Let's take another look at that from the end zone and talk about a great pass. Boy, this is really a neat throw. I think it says a lot about this kid, the way he's come back now and throws this ball. We really can't see what they do to the Iowa defense, but obviously somebody missed him because he was wide open. And Utter just put it on the numbers. I'm not so sure that wasn't called from up in the press box. Somebody saw something. 38-21. Iowa still leading Iowa State. We still have 33 seconds left to go in the third quarter. So on our pregame report today, we asked both coaches what they looked for as far as scoring goes. Hayden Fry looked for about 21 points apiece, right. he said. Right. Sort of, you know, three touchdowns. Well, Iowa State's right there, and Iowa has exceeded that. Jim Alden looked for an extremely low-scoring ball game, and here we already have 59 points on the board. Of course, one of Walden's goals this year was to get their deep, their, their touchdowns against average down by 10 points. They gave up about 27 points a game last year. They were hoping to get it down in the area of 17 points a game. Until today, they've been doing pretty well along those lines. Now the Hawkeyes have 38 on the board. Cyclone band still going at it. Now, there's nobody gone home yet here. Everybody's still in their seats. And believe you me, every one of them is filled. Shudak, ready to kick off. Hughes on one side. And Angela on the other side. Well, maybe they all remember the game of two years ago when it went down to the final seconds. This game, uh, Iowa State's really going to have to turn things around to get it that way. But that last play showed you they can strike quickly. And that play shows you how windy it is down there on the uh, turf at Kinnick Stadium. He's going to have somebody come over and hold it, I think. inside the five and a nice return but he steps out at about the 29. Line number 22. 
29 yard return for Dayton Hughes. It was Dave Eater on the stop right in the Iowa bench, and he got out of there in a hurry. Now you have Nick Bell back in there, Mark. Yep. Bell and Montgomery. And the handoff goes to Montgomery. Caught from behind for a loss. Slowed up by Jim Doran, who came charging through. It'll be Lou Montgomery. That's Jim Doran, 17, making the hit. Along with Radigan. Good defense by the Cyclones. Loss of two on the play. It'll bring up second down and 12. But right now, that's the end of the third quarter. And here at Kinnick Stadium, it's the Iowa Hawkeyes with a 17-point lead, 38-21. Looking at some of the numbers today, there's a credit to the rushing defenses of both teams. Nobody setting the rule on fire. Passing Iowa State. Freshman Bob Utter, 11 of 14. Total yardage, 281-197. Here's Nick Bell, and he just pushes one man out of the way and rambles for about seven more. That was Marcus Robertson he pushed out of the way, Mark. Little option play to the right side. Here comes Robertson. And Bell just disposes him with a left arm, puts his shoulder down and picks up some more yardage. How can you not give him the ball? He's tough. Well, Iowa has two looks now. They have Stewart and they have Bell. Both good tailbacks and both uh, can do a little different things. Here comes the pitch to Bell again. And this time he's punished as he tries the left side of the line. Ganged up upon and hit hard as he crossed the 35 to the 36. Yeah, he took a big shot, and he's talking to one of the Iowa State players down there as he comes out of the pile. But he's he's hurting a little bit. See, he's bent over. He, he got a shot. Isaac on the punt. Fourth and three at the 35. High stop. And if he gets this one away, it'll be a miracle. He doesn't. And Iowa State with a big break. They'll have the football inside the 20. Jeff Bauer comes up with it. Well, I'll be interested to see this because I was watching Nick Bell on the sidelines as he came up. This is high, Zach. The ball goes high, and he tries to go up back and get it. Steve Bro is the man who snaps for punts here for Iowa. Isaac can't handle it. And the Cyclones get a big break right here. That's the second turnover today for the Iowa Hawkeyes at Iowa State. First and ten at the 17. Jim Walden said turnovers could mean the difference in this ball game. Patterson goes in motion. And the quick pass to Patterson. He's got one on one. And he gets a gain of about seven or eight inside the ten. I saw him get a gain of about 30 against UNI on that exact same play. He's dangerous when he's outside. And you know, Mark, with 13.57 and counting, if they get a quick one, they'll go away. Single setback in the draw to William. He gets up to the six. He'll have the first down. It'll be first and goal. Well, Iowa's defense reacts real well on this ball, on this uh, particular play. Here we see Utter, little draw play, gives it off to Williams, and the Iowa defense just draws right to it. Official timeout right now. Apparently, there's an injured player out there to shake it up, and it may be Melvin Foster, number 66. It is. A little shake it up. He'll have to come out for a play. And Ted Foley, only a sophomore, will come in his replacement. There's Foster. Well, the Hawkeyes.
guys don't want to lose Melvin Foster for very long. John, let me ask you, knowing the stats from this young Bob Utter today, what difference would Chris Peterson or Blaze Bryant really make? Would it make a difference in this game? You have ESP because I was going to ask you the same question. What the difference is made without those two players in there? I'm not sure. I haven't seen Iowa State that much. I still think you want a veteran quarterback in there if you can get him. Maybe Bryant would add something. But Utter has been playing lights out. But this one goes incomplete. 187 yards of total offense today by Hunter. But that one he had to hurry and throw away under pressure. Well, he threw off the naked reverse, but Leroy Smith was right in his face putting the pressure on him, and the play couldn't develop exactly the way they wanted to. But great numbers there for a young man who was playing high school football just one year ago. They called him the peanut of Brother Rice High School. Patterson in motion. Hunter on the draw. And he gets, oh, really hit hard as he gets down to about the line. Well, Melvin Foster's back in the defensive lineup for the Hawkeyes. This is a nice little play by Utter. Goes back in the old quarterback draw. Remember Billy Wade running this for the Chicago Bears mucho years ago. Brings up third and goal. the balls of the two officially the pitch to Williams nowhere to run Cut ball. out of bounds last to control it I believe will be Iowa State I think they'll hang on to possession and they do but they will lose about five yards on the play and it'll bring up fourth down and goal way back to the seven tough break for the Cyclones right there Iowa really had this play defensed well, though. It wasn't going anywhere, and then the ball came loose. Norm Anderson, the offensive coordinator, and I shouldn't say offensive coordinator, I apologize. The running back coach, he has an awful lot to do with the offense, though. Jeff go Shudak, field goal. on to attempt a 25-yarder. And it's no good. He missed it to the right. 12.36 to go, and it's still a 38-21 ball game. Sold out Kinnick Stadium. Iowa State had their chance. But right now, it's the Iowa Hawkeyes football. And the wave has returned to Kinnick Stadium, believe it or not. Look at that. Hey, there's a football game to watch here. <laughs> Surfs up. Here's a reverse. Goes to Hughes. He gets the block he needs. And then runs out of running room. He steps out at the 39-yard line. And I believe there's also a flag down on the play, so it may go all for naught. Flipping. No doubt about it. Gets it away and completes it titly. Rogers shows great composure right here, feels the pressure, steps up, and he's really been going to Michael Titley today. Michael on the catch, Jim Dorn pushes him out of bounds. Second down and eight. A gain of seven on the play. And in the fourth quarter, Michigan leading UCLA. Arkansas has finally taken the momentum and run out in front of Mississippi. Fumble snap, but it's recovered by the fullback. Montgomery right there to fall on it. And now tempers flaring. <laughs> and everybody calms down. In case you missed the start of the game, there was a bench-clearing brouhaha out there for a couple of moments. The entire Hawkeye bench ran out on the field. I think that was just a way to get some of the pressure off. It cost the Hawkeyes 15 yards for clearing the bench, though. Yep. It was offsetting penalties, I believe. Oh, that's right. That's right. 
wasn't a pretty sight. We've uh, had a great ball game since then. Play action fake. Rogers over the middle. And throws it behind the intended receiver, Sean Smith. He had Smith wide open in the middle of the zone, but he just uh, threw it behind him. We'll take a look. You see a little play action here to Nick Bell. Now he's looking downfield. There's Smith wide open, pass just behind him. Eight of 13 for Rodgers on the day as this puck sails into the stands. And it's going to go back away. Ooh. It's going to be Iowa State football inside the 35. A 16-yard punt. Ball game, and they'll start out of the Iowa 34-yard line. Play action feet from Hunter, and he's going long for Troy Moore, and he has him. Down to the one-yard line, and Hunter's numbers are really climbing. Great pass by the young freshman. Troy Moore, the kid that grew up next door to Jim Walden out in Pullman, Washington. That's why he's in an Iowa State uniform. But that was a great throw by Utter. Little play action comes out to his left. He's looking at him all the way and then just heaves it. Troy Moore never gave up on the ball. 33 yards on that pass to that man, Troy Moore. And now it's first and goal from the one for Iowa State. Delay handoff to Williams, touchdown. State and the Cyclones climbing back in it. I'll tell you, this was almost disaster. The two big guys pulling, and Hunter almost didn't get out from underneath the center. Watching right here, see, he almost didn't get out of there. Gives it to Williams, and he just blows up the middle. By the time Foster hits him, he's in the end zone. You know, mistakes have proven costly for both teams today. It seems no matter who makes the mistake, the other team makes them pay. A 16-yard punt, great field position, and in two plays, Iowa State in the end zone. Shudak with a point after. It's good. So that pulls Iowa State back to within 10. 10-54 to go in the ballgame. Iowa State leading, or rather trailing Iowa, 38-28. to 28. Did you see Schnorr have to reach for that snap? That's the second time that's happened today. But I'm sure with Shudak having missed two field goals, he feels good about hitting the extra point. And as we talked about in the pregame, if there's any area of the game that this turf might affect, it might affect the field goal kicking because these guys aren't used to kicking out of the grass. Well, while we have a moment, just to give you an indication, the freshman Bob Utter today, 13 of 17, 185 yards in the passing department. I don't know if Peterson's going to have his job when he gets back. Well, that's a great situation for Iowa State to have. You know, they have a young man like Utter coming in here. Peterson will come back from that knee injury in a couple of weeks, and they'll have two quarterbacks with experience. Well... It's over at Duke, thank goodness, 59 to nothing. The question was, you know, everybody knew that Marvin Seiler was on the lineup, and how could it be that a freshman would be on the two deep? Well, now you know, he's a good freshman. 37-15 Michigan, all over UCLA in the fourth. Do we see anything exotic here? Nope. But the wind's gonna hold it up. It'll come down short to Hughes at the 22. 30 and no farther and maybe a fumble I don't know I think every white jersey in the field hit him on that play wait a minute Iowa State signaling that it's their ball but nope I'll tell you what that was a clinic on missed tackles Marcus Robertson and Jeff Bauer down there at the bottom of the pile thought they had a piece of it, but it belongs to the Hawkeyes. Yep. 
Good field position, starting out across the 30. Good field position, and they have the wind behind them, too, Mark. Uh, very important right now in that fourth quarter. Ten minutes, 43 seconds to go. A ten-point ball game. 38-28, Iowa leading. Here's in motion. The option hand off to Bell, and he picks up half the distance needed for the first down. I'll tell you what, if I'm Hayden Fry, he gets the ball three out of every four carries. Tough to bring down. Dan Miller will tell you that after that last play. The big linebacker out of Kashmir, Washington, hit him about the line of scrimmage, but uh, Bell ran right through him and picked up five more. Well, he only needs three more to have a 100-yard day. He's got 12 carries, 97 yards. Wouldn't be a bit surprised if he goes over the 100 mark right here. He's got his chance. No. Play action fake. Rogers going deep. And he had a man wide open downfield in Mike Saunders. But it's overthrown, and Rodgers also ended up on his back. But you know what? You said as a play developed, I'll bet he gets it here at the yardage. They used him. They faked to him, drew the defense in, and Saunders came three downfield. Rodgers looks over to the sideline, and they'll send Dana Hughes in for the next play. Rodgers on the afternoon, 8 of 14 for 74 yards. Big number there, no interceptions. Story developing here also. Iowa has not been effective on third down conversions. Third and five, and Iowa just one of eight in third down conversions. Balloon is open. He's got it. First down. That is only the second Hawkeye third down conversion today. Nice little out pattern to John Balloon. Little timing pattern between Rodgers and Yep. Field position, and they have the wind behind them, too, Mark. Uh, very important right now in that fourth quarter. Ten minutes, 43 seconds to go. A ten-point ball game. 38-28, Iowa leading. Here's in motion. The option hand off to Bell, and he picks up half the distance needed for the first down. I'll tell you what, if I'm Hayden Fry, he gets the ball three out of every four carries. Tough to bring down. Dan Miller will tell you that after that last play. The big linebacker out of Kashmir, Washington, hit him about the line of scrimmage, but uh, Bell ran right through him and picked up five more. Well, he only needs three more to have a 100-yard day. He's got 12 carries, 97 yards. Wouldn't be a bit surprised if he goes over the 100 mark right here. He's got his chance? No. Play action fake. Rogers going deep. And he had a man wide open downfield in Mike Saunders. But it's overthrown, and Rodgers also ended up on his back. But you know what? You said as a play developed, I'll bet he gets it here at the yardage. They used him. They faked to him, drew the defense in, and Saunders came three downfield. Rodgers looks over to the sideline, and they'll send Dana Hughes in for the next play. Rodgers on the afternoon, 8 of 14 for 74 yards. Big number there, no interceptions. Story developing here also. Iowa has not been effective on third down conversions. Third and five, and Iowa just one of eight in third down conversions. Balloon is open. He's got it. First down. That is only the second Hawkeye third down conversion today. Nice little out pattern to John Falloon. Little timing pattern between Rodgers and Falloon. And we're going to look at it right now. Quick drop by Matt. Just fires it out here. Falloon has great hands. Picks up the first down. Ball spotted at the 44. This time... The big Nick Bell gets the call. Iowa State can slow him up, but one man can't bring him down. Now, one man can't bring Nick Bell down. He proved it on that one. About six wide jerseys on him at the end of that play. Iowa's offensive line blows out. Here comes Bell. It just keeps going. The white twin jerseys reacting to him right there, Mark. Marcus Robertson finally in on the stop. That also puts Bell over 100 yards rushing today. 13 carries, 103. 38-28, down to 9-25, left to play. The rollout by Rodgers. And he's cut from behind. Dropped by Travis Block.
Travis Block, the young man from Zwingle, Iowa, went to Maquoketa High School. Nice defensive effort right here. And he wraps Matt Rogers up. Great tackle. And we have another two, uh, third down conversion coming up now. Two of nine for Iowa. This one is third and six from the 47. Clock continues to run. 8.40 to go. Iowa State needs the football. Oh, pressure. And complete. What a pass from Rodgers. And it's Bell that hauls it in. The blitz was out on that one. Watch Mark DeBrava, top of your screen, number 25, coming in right here. But watch Lou Montgomery pick him up. And then you got to give credit to Rodgers for delivering the pass to Bell. Great catch, too, by Bell. Great execution by Iowa on that play. They picked up the blitz, and it worked out well. Good camera work by Denny Goodrich. First out, Iowa at the ISU 36. Rodgers on the rollout. Bauer trips him up. And then a flag. A late flag, and we may have piling on. I want to tell you about the blocking the tight end Michael Tinley is doing. He must have driven his man 15 yards away from the play on that ball. Doing a great job out there at tight end. Matt Rogers behind his backs. There's Titley in the background, having driven his man away. He's down, and there's the hit. They call spearing on that mark. I couldn't hear. Well, they call a personal foul. I don't know, but it could go either way. I think. Ooh. Well, like you can call it either way. Late hit, spear, whatever. It's going to cost Iowa State. Boy, they don't need that. You know, they're only 10 points down. The penalty will put the ball at the 15-yard line. And look at the penalties today. 11 for 87 yards against Iowa State. Montgomery. blocking on this play but as you said he had trouble finding the hole and finally he just kind of creates one as he hurdles over the cyclones and gets into the end zone the Iowa coaches say that he reminds them a lot of Norm Granger who was a great fullback here in the 80s early 80s not so sure that hasn't put this one away 44 28 point after it's good 45 28 Iowa came into this ball game a 13 and a half point favorite. They're living up to it today. Well, the Iowa Hawkeyes having a good day of it here at Kinnick Stadium. They lead 45 28 with 7.53 to go. And the win, giving us a little extra time here as. Skillet has to replace it on the tee. Lou Montgomery, the last touchdown. It looked like he was going to be stopped. Then he just waited. The hole developed, and Montgomery ran for Peter. Iowa State. Has two deep receivers, Hill and Williams. And this one headed down to Hill. Hill at the 10. Across the 20 to 25. And about the 26-yard line. Mark up in Minnesota last week. A big play on fourth down. Iowa State got caught blitzing. Minnesota made the most of it. Now, you look at that third down play that Iowa had to convert. And bring it to Brava. They, if they'd have stopped Iowa on that one, that had gotten the ball back, probably. They would have had to try a field goal. Instead, it doesn't work. Iowa goes in for the touchdown. And now at 45-28, it's going to be mighty tough to, to win this ballgame. But that gentleman still has had an impressive day. 13 of 17 for Bob Hunter in the passing department. Nearly 200 yards. And you know he's going to air it out here with time dwindling down. This one too high. 
intended for Schulte, the tight end. Well, Hunter had all night to, to throw this one plus all day. Just drop straight back. Look at the blocking inside. Double team and a couple of the Hawkeyes. Just over. Just misses him. Flat out misses him. Trying to get it over the head of Mike Wells, who's in there at nose guard right now. Single setback for Iowa State. And Williams gets the call. Makes a nice cut. Gets his way up to about the 35. Still be short of the first down. Leroy Smith among those in on the tackle. Third and two at the 35. And Hayden Fly, it appears anyway, en route to an eighth straight win over Iowa State. And his fourth in a row over Jim Walden. Hunter, shovel pass to Sherman Williams. First down across the 45 to the 46. Sort of an inside pass there. Sort of a That's a great pass. little play. It's a play Iowa has used in the past. Comes back, sucks in the defense. And there's Williams. Good blocking upside, inside too. That's Jason Olenzak, the young man from Decora, coming in to make the stop. Have a player shaken up now. There's Eddie Polly being attended to by the Iowa trainers and right ankle, right leg. Junior from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Eddie's a hitter. No doubt about that. Clock stop for Polly to make his way to the sidelines. Exactly seven minutes left to play. Don't forget next week. The Hawkeyes head down to take on nationally ranked Miami's Hurricanes. Iowa State returns home to host Western Michigan. Hunter, pressure from behind, sacked, football, recovered by Iowa. And I think it's Moses Santos. It is. Here comes Santos in for the back side. Hunter takes his time, but Santos is coming. Ball loose. And Santos is going to get it. Tony Stewart back in now as tailback for the Hawkeyes. And here comes Hartley, the quarterback. And he keeps it. And it's taken away from him. Look at this! Touchdown Iowa State by Gary Peterson! He took it away from Hartley in midair! Even our cameramen were confused on this one. Well, here's Hartley rolling out. Dorn puts some pressure on him. He looks outside, fakes the pitch, is hit, and watch, Peterson just rips it away from him. Six Hartley goes yards. down with nothing. <laughs> there he is. Peterson's a sophomore middle linebacker. 6'1", 222 pound sophomore. 62 yard touchdown. And now it's back to an 11 point game. <laughs> And make it down to 10 again now. <laughs> well, I guess it's not over. Six and a half minutes to play, 45-35. Iowa still on top. Just when you think you've seen it all. This is going to have to go down as one of the better games in this series, Mark. I, I, I don't know if Iowa State Cyclone fans will agree because if they end up on the short end, but what a great effort by both teams here this afternoon. We've had some big plays. We've had some miscues that have led to big plays. There's Gary Peterson from Grand Island, Nebraska, way out there on I-80. And that's a long way out, ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever driven it. Well, the funny thing about it is the officials didn't even know where the ball is. They were looking for it, and <laughs> they looked down the field. There's Peterson. 
Well, I'll tell you what, that's a memory that'll last your lifetime. You know? It will indeed. <laughs> Jim Wallace even chuckling about that one. <laughs> How do you show the highlights in two minutes tonight at 10 o'clock? That's what I want to know. When you've already got 80 points on the board. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that one will make Hayden show. You know it'll make Jim show, right? <laughs> You know, you think back, Iowa came out and just dominated that third quarter. I mean, Iowa State could have folded at that point. They did not. It's been a bad game for three quarters. quarters. It's yep. just the third that's the difference. That's exactly right. Now, I'll tell you what. This game is everything it should be, everything it's hoped to be. Great football fought all the way through down to the end. And we're not there yet. Six and a half minutes to go. Here's that onside kick. It hasn't gone ten yet. And Iowa recovers. Took a, took a funny bounce there, and Iowa State was waiting for the ball to go 10 yards, and it never made it. Yeah, it was a frustrating play for them. They couldn't do anything. They can't touch the ball, or it's an illegal touch, so they had to wait for it to go 10 or wait for an Iowa Hawkeye to touch it, and uh, it just didn't happen. They kick it from the 35, and it's spotted down at the 44 where Michael Tidley wrapped it up. So Iowa with superb field position. And look, Hartley's back on the bench, and Rogers is back in now. And here's the handoff to Montgomery, and he gets maybe a yard. So Jim Hartley gets in for one play from scrimmage. Not a play he'll want to remember. He shots in a 62-yard touchdown for the opposing team. Mike Saunders are back in the lineup for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Mike's still not 100% from that knee injury suffered uh, last year during a little pickup basketball game. Here's the delay handoff to Stewart. You know, that last touchdown by Iowa State made him, may have infuriated Hayden Fry a little bit there. He's got all his starters back in there again now. Mark DeBrava makes the stop on Stewart. I guarantee it scared him. Here we go. The handoff to Stewart is back in the ball game now. Picks his way to Brown makes the first hit and he goes down. Iowa coming up with a third down situation. Third and four and Iowa three of ten on third down conversions. As you look at the numbers on Tony Stewart. He too has had a good day. Quick pitch to Stewart. He had blocking out in front, flag on the far side of the field, and Stewart close to the first down marker. Short on what the flag's all about now. I believe it's going to be on Iowa. We had Titley out there. We had Bellisser blocking on that side of the line. Holding. That'll be a biggie. That's Velliser, 73, pulling out. There it is on Titley. Titley's holding on the outside against Radigan. The trier right now wants an explanation. <laughs> Third and 13. No doubt about what Rodgers is going to do with this one. He's going for broke, and he's got a man there, but he overthrows John Falloon. Falloon had three steps on his defender. Well, Matt was frustrated, and Hayden Fry is going to say something to him right now. He had somebody that he wanted him to throw it to. There you see him talking about the play. Iowa State knew what was coming on that play defensively. Watch out, Mark. Isaac almost has it blocked. And this one will sail out of bounds, and they'll spot it deep in Iowa State territory, way down at the 10. A 37-yard punt for Jim Isaac and no return. 4.44 left to play in the ballgame. A 10-point margin right now.
And Bob Utter coming on again to guide the fortunes of the Cyclones. You'll have three wide receivers in Block Valley, Spencer, and Moore. And you almost know that every play is going to be a pass now because they need to score at least twice. And time is of the essence. Over the middle, Troy Moore collects it at the 25. He's up to the 27. And they'll stop the clock while they move the chains. And Iowa State now going without a huddle. This is something we saw a great deal of from Brett Olberg and company in the last couple of years. Iowa State calls two plays. Quick out. Sherman Williams across the 30 to the 32. He's still in bounds. And this time the clock will continue rolling. I think Williams, or Williams wanted to get out that time. Again, no huddle. What this does, John, it keeps the defense from changing their formation and alignment. Oh, what a catch by Spencer. No, it is no good. Spencer really went up high for that one. That'll stop the clock, and it will allow Iowa State the chance to huddle if they want it. Here's the replay. Two-step drop. Spencer fights for it with Burton Hanks and can't come up with it. Ball was incomplete right there. Third down conversion coming up for Iowa State. You know, coming in, Mark, this is the one thing I wondered. Could the freshman run the no-huddle offense? Four of ten in third down conversions for Iowa State. All he needs is five yards. And he may have it, but he paid the price. Going to be an interesting spot right now. They will spot it at the 38. Ooh, ooh. This, yep, first down. Needed the 37. Iowa State going without a huddle. Clock stopped while they move the chains. 4.04, and it'll start right now. Hunter. All the time in the world, and going long for double coverage. And it's broken up, intended for Glotfelly, and he was drawing a crowd. Hanks and Doug Book over there on the uh, breakup. I was only rushing three men right now. That's one reason that uh, Utter has so much time to pass the ball. Iowa has an extra defensive back in there. There you see the time remaining in the bottom right-hand corner. 3.54 to go. Iowa by 10. Bob Utter today, 15 of 21, 236 yards in his first collegiate game. <laughs> Thrown against the grain, intended for Troy Moore, and broken up nicely. Burton Hanks. Burton Hanks. <laughs> Burton Hanks, the chief rocker, is what's written on his shoes. He has a T-shirt like that also. The veteran quarterback, or cornerback, we should say, out of Texas. The defensive play by Hanks. Great job by Hanks. Third down and ten. Draw play to Williams. He won't get the first. But he does get half of it. And now Iowa State calls timeout. They have two remaining, one after this one. And while they take time to talk, so will we. It's still a 10-point game with 3.38 left to play. Our story here at Iowa City, Iowa by 10 with 3.38 to play. In other games, Michigan, a winner over UCLA, 38-15. And look at this one. It is a tie between Pittsburgh and Syracuse. That's twice in a row for Syracuse. They haven't won or lost. Hunter keeps it on fourth down, and he picks up the first down. A gutsy call, a quarterback draw on fourth and about four. Well, there's no doubt Iowa State was going to go for that one. They had to on fourth down to keep this thing going. Now it's Utter running the show, setting up his offense. 
He's going to put Patterson, the fullback, split way out to the left as a safety valve. Otter throws on the run, intended for Glotfeld, the incomplete. That will stop the clock with 3.23 left to play. First downs, Iowa State leading 21 to 19. Timeouts remaining. Cyclones with one, Hawkeyes with two. If he had looked downfield on that last play, Sherman Williams came free. They'd have picked up some good yardage. But he's doing a great job right now. 3.23. Left to play. Troy Moore comes in for Patterson now, so they have an actual extra, extra wide out, true wide out in the ball game. All the time in the world, dumps it over the middle of the clock. He picks up about four or five, does not get out of bounds, so the clock will continue to roll. Well, Iowa says, great, if you want to pass it in the middle, we'll let you pass it in the middle, because now the clock won't stop. Same formation, nobody in the backfield. This just passing drills. This time they go out to Hussein Womack. And he drops it incomplete. That'll stop the clock at 2.52. Warmack, the starting fullback for the Cyclones, but converted to tight end due to a lack of depth in that position. That also allows them to get Patterson on the field at the same time. So you have two good athletes on the field. You don't want one of them sitting down. And again, Iowa State now facing fourth down. Fourth and five on the 46. They need to get to the 41. And they give it to Williams. Bottled up inside, and they stop. The one time Iowa State decides to run the football, Iowa is waiting. And that should about do it. Well, those fans should feel relieved because this Iowa State club has really come in here and put on a battle today. And again, Hayden Fry electing to stay with Matt Rogers at quarterback. Well, now it's keep the clock rolling and move the sticks. Aiden Fry wants down, nothing more than to eat up 246. That's not going to make Aiden very happy. <laughs> few people starting to leave now, Mark. Just a few. Most people stand for the bitter end on this one. I don't know if I'd leave. Boy, we've had these fireworks <laughs> today. First and 15 with a penalty. And Bell gets the call. And he is tripped up. I think Gary Peterson, the man who owns the touchdown today, made the tackle. The one thing that Hayden Fry is going to be happy about in this game is the fact that once again, they've been able to run the ball very, very well. When you got people like Stewart and Bell in the backfield, you got some uh, good offensive linemen like Davis, Belliser, Devlin, Agater, and Baxley. You should be able to run the ball. Iowa, of course, has been a passing team in recent years. They came out last year. They said they wanted to be a running team. It really never developed. This year in the first two games against Cincinnati and now against the Iowa State, the Hawkeyes have been able to move the ball on the ground fairly consistently. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The schedule has gotten a whole lot tougher from last week to this week for Hayden Fry. And it gets a whole lot tougher next week when they go to Miami. It'll be a whole new ball game down there. Miami will be playing their first home game of the season. Uh, they'll be loaded for bear. I was shifting a lot of personnel. There you see the crowd, great crowd here at Kinnick Stadium this afternoon. 
Stephen Hartley was there. Yeah. I remember when there were trees down there in that north end zone, Mark. <laughs> no more. Gets across midfield. He'll still be about four shy of the first down, but no doubt about what Hayden Fry wants to do. He wants to give Bell the ball. And see if he can tackle him. Lazard in on the stop here. Well, Iowa State's blitzing on this play. When you put the pressure on, you throw the screen, you give him the draw. This time they give him the draw. I don't think I was uh, showing the screen all day that I can remember. Third Either down and has. four. Iowa three of 11 in third down conversions. Bell with 115 yards today. Here's the draw. And he will not get it. Not on that carry. He'll be one yard or two yards shy. So do you punt or give it a go? You got to kick it. You got to kick it. That was Marcus Robertson on the tackle. We've had two great uh, quarterbacks playing here today, and Robertson and, of course, Burton Hanks from the Hawkeyes. Both will probably get a real good look by the pros come draft time. Oh, well, Hayden remembers, you know, some bad punts so far today. He's not going to take a chance, I don't think. He's going to go for it. Fourth and two on the 47. Well, maybe it's just a long count. Well, let's think about this. It's not too bad a call because the, uh, nope, the punt team's coming in now. He just wanted to see if he could draw the five. And it also gives Hyzak five extra yards to shoot for the corner. Good snap and a good punt. High hanger. Robertson draws a beat on it, drops the ball, picks it up at the eight, and running out of room, he is dropped at the eight. A high hanger by Hyzak, backing Iowa State up against their own end line. 59 seconds left to play. Burton Hanks in on the tackle, the two cornerbacks meeting on that play. And the clouds uh, begin to roll in here at Iowa City. We've had sun all afternoon, Mark. And now the clouds roll in and the uh, traffic jams up for a couple of hours. Oh. Does it ever. Iowa State can't stop the clock by calling timeout. And Iowa doesn't want to. And other out of the flat comes Sherman Williams. And he has rolled right about the 13, 14 yard line. And the clock continues to run as you see. And Iowa State can't stop it except by getting out of bounds. Going without a huddle. I think now you start throwing deep. Those little flare passes out the flat don't prove anything. Iowa's in their prevent defense right now. Over the middle, Block Valley's got it. And then it pops out. Incomplete. Owen Zach on the tackle. Incomplete. I'll tell you what, my hat's off to both teams today, Mark. Uh, they put on a great show for everybody who came and everybody who watched. Certainly did. I guess the next point of interest is whether or not Jim Walden and Hayden Fry shake hands. If Tom Davis and Lou Henson can shake, I would think that Hayden and Jim can. <laughs> Bury the axe, right? But I don't know if they will. They didn't shake hands before the game. Jim walked across the 50, hoping Hayden could block his way a little bit, but never did. Inside shuttle pass to Williams. To about the 18, close to first down yardage. May have it, may not. Oh, they're going to mark it at the 17, fourth down. Clock continues to run. This may be the last play of the ball game coming up, unless they get the first down. Five, four, three. It will be the last play of the game. It is complete to Mahoney, and it's over. The Iowa Hawkeyes come into the ball game, a 13 and a half point favorite. Jim Walden comes across the field looking for Hayden Fry. 
And there it is. Well, there is no doubt they are shaking hands. Don't go away. Iowa over Iowa State, 45 to 35.